All right. Hello, everyone. Shalom, everybody. Peace of the Lord to all of you. I hope my voice is coming good and clear. Please invite your friends. And uh, I see some people complaining, saying I'm late. The fact I'm not. Uh, you guys are late, as usual. I said I will go live at 8.30. And now it's 8.38. So who's late? It's you. Just think about it. Anyway, Prophet Muhammad he said, the one who come last is the first. Isn't it him who said he is the last prophet, but he is the first? <laughs> anyway, I don't want to waste your time. So today we will have a good time and I hope Muslims will join us. And I have a short clip to share with you. I decided to work as a movie director and I think I do a good job in it. I mean, I don't know. I'm, seriously. Look like I'm really I'm skilled, you know. I don't know if this is a. Uh, uh, look at this. Uh -huh. stop okay uh, as you see I made this uh, video uh, you know I decided to work in the movie business and I think I have a future in that career and uh, today we are going to discuss uh, any story the Muslim they choose for us I'm not going to pick up for you a story any story if your choice you think it's a good story to mention to us about your religion to convince us that Muhammad is a prophet we are willing to listen uh, you know the Quran is full of mad crazy stories and uh, yesterday we have Muhammadan who called me and he mentioned the word logic many many times uh, in fact each time you speak to Muslim they speak about logic and the second you ask them any question about the religion they say you cannot try to apply logic to God so it looks like logic work only in one direction for them. So if it's Christianity, it have to be logical. If it's Islam, should not be logical. However, in Christianity, uh, we apply logic, and the logic is simple. When it's come to God, this is the logic. When it's come to God, nothing is impossible with God. That's the, the this is the perfect logic. Otherwise, why we call him God? If God, he have uh, uh, things that are impossible for him like can God have a son the Muslim they say no well that mean he is not God because God he can have a son who is going to stop him if I'm a man I'm a man he can have son <clears> how <throat> God cannot so the Muhammadan one they speak about logic they try to use logic for a long time as an example here we have a video in front of us and this is Lili Dawa is speaking about how a scientific miracle is debunked but for the last 30 years, almost more than 30 years, the Muslim, they have nothing to speak about except scientific miracles of the Quran. But then when they notice that this is not working and this is a joke and it's, it's a big fat lie and people now getting more and more educated. And as we see, the number of people making fun of Islam is really increasing in a, in a, in a, like a, in a rabid way. So, uh, you know, a few years ago, we have a few people to speak about Islam. Now we have more people laughing at it. Uh, more people fighting it uh, like the number is growing and this is make me really uh, happy to see uh, like I saw some Christians in speaker corners in the last few days in England uh, I like to see such an invasion to show the Muslims and to put them in their place that they know nothing they are nothing and the religion and their God is nothing if we have any Muslim who would like to join us please feel free we would like to hear you 
For me, I am convinced that the Quran is full of scientific miracles. Let me take a video that I did. I mentioned that the scientific miracles in the Quran were debunked. And for some odd reason, funnily enough, like, as if they thought that it was a slip of the tongue. I'll repeat it again, very carefully. The scientific miracles argument in the Quran got debunked. Okay. <clears throat> but you know, the issue here, that if the scientific miracles of the Quran got debunked, that means the Quran is full of scientific error. Do you guys understand what you're saying? Because as long as it is scientific in the Quran, and it's not scientific no more. Correct? Why is going to miracle? The miracle is simply because supposedly uh, how the Quran knew this. Right? As long now it turned to be not scientific, that means it is an error. So it speak about science, but it's not scientific, it's debunked. So by saying what he said, he admit that the Quran is a book of anti-science, it's full of errors, it's stupid. You see, science is not what I go with all the time. As an example, is it scientific like Jesus is son of a virgin? No, it's not. You know, women, they, they need to have a, a spouse in order to have a baby, as simple as that. So science here doesn't match with the Bible, but we don't say, uh, we don't fabricate and lie and say uh, stories is not there. This is what the Bible says, we believe in it, and the science that agree with it, it's not a problem for us. For the Muslims, they try for the last 30 years to fabricate and manipulate the words of their book to make it fit with science, which is absolutely, absolutely a big fat lie. And now they start collapsing one after one, saying the truth, that you know what, scientific miracles is not exist, it's a joke, it's a lie. But by saying that, this is what you did to yourself when you applied science to the Quran as a start. Now, when you try to take it back, you cannot, because simply what you are saying, that science in the Quran is not correct. This is what you mean by debunked. <laughs> he said scientific miracle, debunked. So every claim of science in the Quran debunked to be wrong. Otherwise, how we debunk it without proving it wrong, right? So by saying this statement, he announced that his book is just a joke. And today, we are welcoming any Muslim. We are in Discord. The link is in the info Rumble in YouTube. You just click on it and you can join us. And if you speak nice and you are a gentleman, we will be nice to you. If you are rude, you want to use bad language, we will throw you out of the window. Uh, do we have any Muhammad that would like to join? Any Muhammadan would like to join us? Galgamish? Okay, we have Galgamish want to join us. Hello, CP. Hey, hello, Galgamish. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm great. Um, I really like your work that you're doing. All right. I, I'm not a Muslim, but uh, I'm an atheist. Okay. What does that mean? What atheists mean? Like, the, there is no God. There is no God? How you can prove something does not exist, not to be exist? Well, I'm actually not sure. So, uh -huh. I'm, I'm reading the Bible right now. Oh, okay. Because, you know, yeah, uh, you know, I went to the other day. Uh, mm -hmm. I have another room, you know, at the office. And I went, I was looking for a ghost, and uh, there's no ghost. So I wanted to prove that there's no ghost in my room by proving that there's no ghost. So a ghost is something we cannot see, and because I cannot see, there's no way I can prove that it's not there. So I said to myself, let me prove to myself that it's not there by saying it's not there. And then I was able to be convinced, and I slept very, very well, because I just said to myself, as long as it's a ghost, we cannot see it. So it is not seen. So what I cannot see, it's not there. But then the radio turned on and I start hearing things which I cannot see. How people, they can speak to you from a long distance and you cannot see them. Uh, I don't think that's possible. No, it's possible. Isn't it the radio wave? Like when somebody call you from yeah, China. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody call you from China. He is in China. You are in America or in Europe, wherever you are. 
and then you hear his voice. So do you believe he exists unless you see him? Do you believe his voice is a true or it's a fiction? Yeah. How you how, why you believe in that? You did not see him. Uh, it's just a voice. Because, because he exists. How you know? Um, because I, I. Okay, I will make I will make it simple for you. There's many voices we cannot hear. Is that true scientifically? Yeah. All right. So if the frequency is not what we can hear, does that mean those voices are not exist? No. So, you know, the logic of uh, atheism is wrong because if you cannot hear it or you cannot see it, it doesn't mean it's not there. Yeah. All right. Anything else I can help you with? Yes, yes. Okay. Actually, uh, y you have a... Yeah. You said about that Quran verse about um, uh, the woman interrupting the prayer, right? The women interrupting the Muslim prayer? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, when I when I told a Muslim about it, uh, he told, uh, and I told that um, women are given the same status as donkeys, and he took the uh, eighth commandment and showed it to me, and he said that women are given the same status in Christianity. What is the eighth commandment? Eighth commandment. Uh, do not covet. What does it have to do with with the women? They are not. Uh, <laughs> what don't covet mean? Um. It it <clears throat> says. Yeah. You shall not covet your neighbor's house, nor your neighbor's wife, nor his so? male servant, or female servant, or his ox or donkey. So, the, the verse we are talking about in the Quran is about you, if you touch a woman, your prayer is not accepted. If you touch shit or women, it's not accepted. What does this have to do with the, with the commandment you are talking about? Uh, so, if I don't fornicate, if I don't go and hijack the wife of my neighbor, that is the same in Islam? What does this have to do with this? Uh, he he told me that the position of women are the same in how, Christianity. How? 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 Where? If it uh, says it, if it says don't fornicate, if it says don't fornicate, if it says don't steal, if it says don't witness false, if it says uh, uh, don't go to the house of your uh, a friend and uh, uh, go after his wife and uh, his slave or. Uh, his women or his animals, uh, how this is uh, the same. Muhammad, he do the opposite. Muhammad, he go to his own son, uh, son house. He flirt with the wife when the husband is not there. And he slept with her. And later he took her supposedly according to Muslim as wife. So how the Ten Commandment is disgracing women? No, like... Uh... They they place women along with uh, servants and oxes. No, no. You see, this is everything in the neighbor house. You know, uh, uh, no, yeah. no, no. You see here, it doesn't say if you are praying, your prayer is not accepted. It says you, you, you as a man, you don't wish to take the wife of your neighbor, the money of your uh -huh. neighbor, the the property of your neighbor. What does have to do with this? Those are your neighbors. Whatever he have there. They belong to them. So, I, so yeah, but so, the, so but the is, women are not. No, no. Not. So what? And the man is there too. The man himself, the man, the owner, the neighbor. So your your relative, don't take his wife. Don't don't uh, have lost to it. So it, it's calling calling her his wife, and then and, and, and don't go after his slaves or his property or his uh, 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 whatever he own. So. All the all everything in the house of your neighbor does not belong to you, so you have no right over it. What does this have to do with the prayer and the women? She is equal to a dog and a donkey. So now, if I say to you, nobody have the right to come to your house and steal from you or kidnap your wife, steal your TV, uh, steal your dog, 
a stereo horse or stereo car that mean I made your wife equal to the car and the dog? Uh, no. Okay, that's what it says. You have no right over your your relative house. You know. But but why 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 does why doesn't that say that about the husband? What the husband? What says what? I mean. Say don't take yeah. his the man the man is the is, yeah. the is the leader of the house. And he is the yeah. one who owned the house. So the wife is his wife. Uh -huh. And usually yeah. what happened, it is the male who steal the female, not the female steal the male. Right? But these days... Hey. Yeah, friend, yeah, what, right. what these days, what that days, you know? I mean, uh, what kind of a man, the man will take him and, 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 and grab him and put him in the car. You must be a CC, you know? So... Uh, a man is a man unless he is, a, you know, he thinks he's a female. Yeah, these days, always there's people who they are sissy exist in the time of Moses too. However, those are not exist in the eyes of God. We are talking about men, real men. So the root, the good man is the one, the one who don't go and wish the women of his neighbor or his relative or his property or his house or his slave or anything belong to him. So what the verse here is saying, teaching us ethic, not teaching us that women is equal to donkey. Yeah, hmm. I and, understand. And the, and the same time, we have we have the uh, uh, the gospel in the Old Testament, uh, uh, in the, in, like uh, in the Old Testament, it says that the man he leave his parents when he married his wife, he leave his parents and he became with her once a chad. So if Christianity or Judaism Consider the women equal to a dog, how the man will become Echad with the dog or the donkey? What kind what kind of disrespect disrespect is? You want to make unity with the dog? So when the Bible says the man he leave his parents and become with his wife, one woman, his wife, Echad, which means become one, that is showing you that here the women is treated as an equal partner. A man alone is not making echad. Him and his wife, they make an echad which is united by God. That's why Jesus said that you shall not divorce unless of fornication or something really horrible happen. So Muslim, they can find an excuse, but we laugh at it. And uh, I, 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 you know, for me, I'm not, I'm not trying to put you down, but look like you, you, you know, many people like you. They decide not to think, not to use their brain. Read, read the verse. Does it say anything really that the woman is equal to the dog? This house, no. have a woman, have a closet, have material, have TV, have car, have a, a dog, have a donkey, uh, have a children's. The, the Bible says nothing in this house you take. It doesn't belong to you. That's it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Uh, I... I'd like to ask you, what is the position of women in Christianity? I just told you, the man, he leave his parents and he get married with his women and they will become a chad. You see, in, 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 in the Bible, God himself is called a chad. So the Bible is, Jesus himself, he speak about marriage. He said that, uh, and the Bible speak that the man, he should love and he give himself to his women, to his wife, the same as a Christ he gave himself to the church. So in Christianity, the church is the women, as a symbolic, and the man is a Christ. So the job of the man is not to subdue the women to beat her, but to be loving, the same as the, the Messiah he loved the church, and he gave himself to save her. So we are the church, the Messiah, he gave himself to save us. And this is what the man who is a Christian man should do to his wife. He gave himself to his wife so that we become a unity. And you know, when you think about marriage as unity, then the word wife, the word husband is not even there. Why? Because what is yours is mine and what is mine is yours. If I am happy, you are happy. If I'm rich, you are rich. If I am poor, you are poor. And that goes for both. It's a unity. In Islam, there is no unity. 
even the property of the women is separated from the property of the man. Why? Because there is no marriage in Islam. Do you understand? Yeah, but yeah, uh, and uh, and that guy told me that uh, why women you don't are go, the why you don't of go, men in Christianity. Why you don't go and bring me the guy instead of saying to me, "This guy told me," and this guy told me. Um, he, he won't he won't come. Okay, who cares? You know, he don't dare. No problem. That's me. He's a potato. What do you think? Yeah, which one, in your idea as an atheist, which one is better, to be Christian or an atheist or a Muslim? Be Christian. So why you are staying atheist? Um, I'm I'm reading I'm reading the New Testament. Yeah, but still, so, I'm, I'm asking you why why you still an atheist? Uh, you know, regardless of regardless of reading the, the New Testament or not, what is atheism about? It doesn't give you any value in life. If you I mean, the word I marriage, I think there is there is an invisible force, but uh, I I still completely don't know the Bible to call myself listen, a Christian. Yeah, listen, listen carefully. If you're an atheist, are you married? No. Okay. If you're an atheist and you get married, the word marriage mean what in atheism? Um, when two people love each other. Where this, is, where, where this is coming from? Is that atheism thing? No. Don't the atheists cultural. believe? Don't atheists believe we are animals? Since when you will have a wife? What wife for? Um, Can an atheist have sex with his daughter? No. Why not? Because it causes genetical complications. So you are worried about genetical? Don't uh, don't have. Uh, don't make her, you know, uh, uh, use candom. Here we go. We solve the problem. She can take bills. So this is the only yeah, worry you have? Is, this is, is the only worry right. you have? Huh? It's not what? It's not right. Why it's not right? I don't know. Aren't you an atheist? Yeah. Okay. Well, atheist, he believes in an animal. She's an animal. You're an animal. Animal do what animal do. So atheism, atheists are a bunch of stupid. They lie to themselves. They claim that they are not religious and they don't take anything from Christianity. But in fact, the second they want to do something right, they have to go to Christianity. Otherwise, they are doomed. Because either you are an animal, as you claim, and you do what animals do, then the word mother is not exist in your dictionary. The word father is not exist. The word daughter, the word son, the word wife, and all those things that exist, if you use them, you are not an atheist. Especially if those words define relationship between those people. So if you say, I cannot have sex with my daughter, well, according to who? Darwin? No. All right. All right, my friend. Thank, uh -huh. thank you for joining us. Wait, wait, wait. wait. There's one more thing. Uh huh. Um. Uh, I, I I live in Canada, uh, but I want to uh, uh, let you know about something. So I I I went to I met I went to a church, and uh, one of the members said uh, that they are sponsoring people coming in boats and giving them up to eight months of money and sponsorship. And they also said that most of them are Muslims. Well, those are dummy, dummy people. What we can say? Yeah, I believe you. There's a lot of dummy, hey. st stupid. Uh, they they call themselves Christians, but in fact, they are very, very stupid people. Yeah. I heard, I heard the Church of England doing this, but this is well, the first still, time. There is a lot of heard about Canada. Yes, soon, those the one, the same ones they are bringing them, they will burn their churches. The same what they did to the biggest church in France. The one who burned it is a Muslim. The biggest church in France. Yeah, was burned by a Muslim. So those are the bunch of dummies, and they will be, they will pay the price. You see, I will be happy to see those people being punished. I believe Islam is a curse on sinners. Islam is a demon. Islam is Satan. And when people they go away from their sins and the logic with God, they are not Christian no more, and then they will be punished. 
And that will happen to any country in the world. Doesn't matter if it's Europe, America, it doesn't matter. When people, they lose their sins, they will be punished severely. And there's many ways God, he can punish them. They will be punished. So now they are helping them. Soon they will be homeless themselves. And those migrants, they will take over their country and they will be kicked out. And they will take a boat somewhere asking for refuge. <laughs> anyway, good for them. I'm not going to and, drive. And when, when I told them that they asked me, they called me a racist and asked me to forgive my enemies. Yeah, so they are, so they are saying that we help the enemy to come to our land and take it over it. <laughs> that is a stupid thing to say. So love your enemy. When Jesus says like uh, love your enemy, is not by giving them hugs and kisses, but by rebuking them, by showing them the truth, by not by giving them uh, the power over our country, our land, so they can close our churches and subdue us and occupy us. That is stupid. You know, Jesus never said that. So those people, they are just dummy. Those are not Christians. Those are Antichrist. Uh, they said we shouldn't physically attack them and stuff. We shouldn't join police and... We should... I don't know. We should, we should, not, we should not attack who? Uh, the, the people, even if they attack us. Well, those are stupid people, my friend. If somebody attack me, I will make him shish kebab. Peter himself, he have a sword. Jesus himself, he said, the one who don't have a sword, go and buy one. The Old Testament, the Lord of the Old Testament is the same as the Lord of the New Testament. And those are funny, stupid people. They have nothing to do with the Bible. Stay away from them. Yeah, I'm that I'm I'm a little bit confused about that part. I just uh, I just told you the answer. Anything else? Yeah, n nothing much. All right. Okay. Do we, all uh, right. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, well. Have a good day. Anyone he claimed that he is a Christian, and he claimed that he is against violence. He is a hypocrite. Because violence, uh, it is one of the method to stop violence. If somebody come in and he have a gun in his hand shooting innocent people, what do you do? You tell him, can we talk? Let me explain to you. Right? So there is, there is people who they try to make Jesus sound like a hippie, like he is uh, the guru, you know? Like, shall we kill an ant? So the guru now, he have a bird is dying. And now the bird is not eating anything unless we give him a worm. Shall we kill with a worm to save the bird? Or let the bird die and let the, war, uh, uh, the worm live? <laughs> so, you know, those are not Christians. Those are dummy, stupid people. They have no idea what the Bible teach. And uh, 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 for me, they, I consider them kind of a hippie. You know, they are false, false people. Uh, they are a criminal themselves. They do abortion and they support it, many of them. They kill animals, but they are against blood. I mean, why are you a chicken? Isn't uh, is it a chicken? If, if you are against violence at all, well, don't be violent, then be a Hindu. Don't eat a chicken, don't kill uh, birds, uh, don't step on an ant. Uh, you know, just eat uh, falafel. So, uh, you know, those people are lost and they are very confused and they don't present Christianity in any way. In any way. Okay, Amber. Hi. Okay. So, a bit of backstory. Um, I come from an atheist family. That my my family moved to France for the secular law. Oh. I hate they hate religion yeah. so much. So my first understanding of religion is Islam and I'm just trying to, I, I was a Muslim for like two days and then I had a friend who explained all of my questions but I still have more questions and I guess I just don't understand what is God? Like that's my biggest question is I can't understand that. So Amber, you are, you are now an atheist or now you are a Muslim? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what I am. Okay. So, <sighs> so uh, I don't know where to start. Then, uh, do we, do you want us to start with you being a Muslim or with, with you who don't know? 
So I was an atheist because of my parents, and but I just kept having problems with my, like I just kept feeling wrong. Like everything felt wrong. What they were doing felt wrong. I couldn't explain it. So I rejected my parents and I searched religion, and then I found Islam first. And then the people were super nice. They like they like explained things to me like God. Morality, it all made sense. It, like everything made sense like, to like me. What? Like what makes sense? Give me an example. Um, why we shouldn't like have marriage? Like we, why we shouldn't have sex outside of marriage? Like they but, explain. Uh, but, but Muslim, they have sex out of marriage. In fact, Muslim, <laughs> Muslim, they never have marriage. You see, marriage is when a man and a woman they fall in love and they make a family. Is that correct? See, my friend told me that, and that's starting to make sense, but it's just so confusing. I don't know who's right. Oh, hold on. If a man, if Muslims have marriage, you don't marry two, three, four, keep replacing them, divorcing them. That is obviously not marriage. That is a sexual activities. Do I agree? Okay, so what is marriage? Marriage? The word, what is the word marriage in English mean? I don't know. Like it's just like a government contract to me. To no, like, no, to no, no. You see, uh, English is not my first language. Uh, you merge together. You merge. So we marry. We got married. So now we merge together. And the Bible define it as being one. So I, ju I was I was just uh, uh, speaking to the one before you. When the man he marry a woman, they become a chad, which means become one person, not two. So yet, yet they are two as two person, yes, but now they are a unity. So in Christianity, marriage is a unification of two people by love of God to be together. Not for the sake of, uh, you know, part of the marriage is the man is attracted to the woman. She is a female and the female, she like the man because he's a man. So. Uh, we are not denying the sexual part of it. It is a major part of it. However, it's not to sponsor lust, but to sponsor family based on love and unity. So the man is willing to give himself to the wife and the wife get willing to give herself to the husband. When we say giving yourself, it's not about sleeping in the bed. It's about you stay with him. You promise him to be loyal. You, he promised you to be loyal for the rest of his life. Defend you with his life. Sacrifice himself to... To make you happy and it's the same for you so marriage in christianity is a promise of loyalty and they're the blessing of god that i will be for you and you will be for me that's beautiful my understanding of marriage from my family was always that few people just wanted to live together and they got better benefits for it like if, if like they liked each other and they wanted to have sex, they marriage they marriage should not be based on a benefit because if you do that, the day the benefit is gone, the marriage is gone. As an example, if I marry you because you are rich, this is a benefit. Tomorrow you lose your money, I divorce you. So the one who who marry based on a benefit, he did not marry the person; he married the benefit. You understand me? But how do we know if people love each other? Like, how do we know if well, we lo want... Well, love is not, is not something not no one can teach you what is love. It is something you need to know, and you have to be mature. Because there is many people, they, uh, if, they, if, if a guy is funny, is a guy, you know, etc., they think they are in love. But the fact, no, they are just, uh, maybe he's unique, maybe there's something different about him. But love is something different. Love is a person you cannot forget. It's a person... You forgive even if he hurt you. It's a person you are going to love him no matter what, even if he is not even good to you. Love is way more than just a relationship. Actually, love is not even a relationship. Love is a state of you being in love, regardless of the person, the other person who loves you or not. As an example, a woman, she have a child, she have a son, she have a daughter. She loves her child, but there's many children, they don't even say hello to the mother. But still the mother, she loves the child. Why? Because she loves him for her love is real, not because it's a benefit. So even though he's, there's no benefit from this child, even though he may be causing her problem, he's making her sad, 
Maybe he is even destroying her life. Maybe she worked day and night just to make him happy. And he is spoiled. He don't care. He make fun of her. He call her name. Still she love him. Why? Because her love is coming from her heart, not from a benefit. So love is not a crush on a person. Love is something unique. Does not change. And doesn't fold. Which means, the Bible says, love never fail. Love never fail. What does that mean? What if I uh, love a woman and she don't want to love me? How, how that is not a fail? No, I did not fail because my love never fail. The state of love will make you live a beautiful life, regardless if people love you back or not. When you are a person in love, you are a successful person, regardless if you are loving a man or loving God or loving trees or loving anything around you. Love never fails, which means love will make you a very stable person, happy person, because you don't feel even rejected because you are in love. You know, it's like, uh, you know, uh, my mom, she think I'm handsome. The neighbors, she think I scared the hell of her. Why? Because my mom, she loved me. So she see her son, even though he looked like a monkey, she see him the most handsome boy in the town. That is love. So because she loved me very much, she don't see the negative things about me. She see beautiful things about me. But there's no way I have a beautiful things about me. That's impossible. So love is when you see even what is supposed to be ugly for someone else, it is beautiful for you. So is that from God? Love for, you know, uh, there's, there's many things about love. As an example, if your love is about sex, you know, that is just the desire. That's not love. As we say, love should not be based on a benefit or because sex, sexual desire is a benefit, you know, is a desire. So if your love is always stable, is not temporarily, that is from God. So how do you know? Like, I, how do you like? I just wait, told wait. you if you don't if if it, like you see, the weather change. It's cold. It's hot. It's warm. Love never change. So yes. if you if you love a person, let us say, uh, you know, uh, you met a person, even a girl, you know, friend of yours, you love her, you know, like you love her as a friend. So you met her once when you were a teenage. Oh, you miss to see her again. Why? Because really you love her. This love is a clean love. I have not, no benefit from there. It's just because you felt something special about this girl and she is a good friend for you. So she stayed, her name stayed in your heart. And no matter what, the distance between you, the, the time different, uh, how many years away, still you remember her and nothing changed. So if you meet her today, you are going to run to see her the same as you saw her 20 years ago. So love is not something changed. Uh, lost, it does. So a man, he want to sleep with the women. She is beautiful. She is desirable. But as soon as he sleep with her, uh, first time, second time, third time, fifth time, ten time, he's get bored. He want to find a new woman. This is, never was love. It was only about him. He, he loved himself. This is a selfish person. So love is about not loving yourself, is loving others, and you love to make others happy. And you know, the way I see love, that if I can make someone happy, that means I am in love with that person. Because I worked to make that person, I give an effort to make that person happy, even though there's no benefit for me. I'm not the one getting happy. It is her or him. So I am in love with this person because I love to help. And that is love coming from God. So if you love people only because they will give you something back, then this is not love. This is just a benefit in so return. Then, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, anything have return, you know, is based on return. Like it can be true love and there is return, no problem. But if your love based on return, then your love never was love. Because the second the benefit or the return stop coming, you are not in love no more and you don't want this person. Even you, you might turn to be an enemy. So like uh, you, you try to speak to a man, he don't want to talk to you. You start calling him names. You start getting angry. You start going crazy. Why? 
because you were not in love with the person you were in love and you, with yourself and you wanted to have him and he reject he said no so now you are going to seek maybe revenge you, this is this is a person who love himself worship himself he do not know what love is so love the way we see it as a christian is the same as the lord the messiah he sacrificed himself even though there's no return he got nothing from it there's no reward for him he come to this earth to save us and people crucified him people spit at him people call him names people make fun of him people say the effort to him so what he got from this nothing but he got a lot why because he loved us the bible says a happiness will be in the kingdom of god for one soul is being saved so this is god this is the love of god you are, we are nothing we are not even ants for him but if one soul is saved there is a happiness in the kingdom of god the kingdom of god is in firework like blessed and amazing happiness the angels are praise, praising for a per, one person is saved so this is what love is love is about you don't see yourself in the mirror you see the happiness of people you care for so if you look at the face of a person let us say you help a homeless a person who is angry a child anything and then you were able to make this person his life better and you feel inside you are so happy that is love so your love make you happy but your love was not for your for your benefit it was for the benefit of that person but because you are really in love seeing the result of your act is positive you are now very much satisfied with your love so love is not a person who is selfish a person who think about himself love is a person who think about others before himself so in order to know if you are in love or not think about it this way do you think about the person in front of you how to make him or her happy or you think when you do something with someone is how he make you happy if the purpose of your act is how he can make you happy or how she can make you happy will mean that's mean you don't love anybody you love just yourself if you do an action anything in life just to make people who you see who you know happy that means really you love them and you don't care for the result coming back to you okay so what do you do when you feel like you don't deserve that like i was talking to like i was in a muslim server and they were talking about how men have like it's okay for them to have multiple wives and such and i was like but why is one not enough like i've always learned that one woman one man and like why 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 do you have to have multiple like why 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 am i not enough you know we i was just talking to an atheist before you i don't know if you heard me uh a person who decide to have many wives he decide to be an animal so we can be an animal and we can act like one and we can live like one and we can die like one but a person who act like an animal he cannot claim to be a human being god when he created adam and eve he created adam and eve not eves all right so a man if he is love he will not look to a different woman same for the women the woman she is in love with the husband her man she will never look at any other man there's many women's i know like especially in the middle east the husband he died christian women the, the husband he died they are not even 30 they never get married after that but many men they ask for their hand after they get after they become widows so they don't get married because they are in love with the with the husband who died so loyalty is the scale of love and the man who marry more than one woman he did not marry them he is for no keating with them he have no loyalty if he is loyal he is in love if he is not loyal he is not in love and same goes for you <laughs> sorry yeah somebody saying was solomon an animal yes he was and the and the bible condemned him for his action 
Even God, he, he killed, you know, God, he caused his family to be destroyed as a result of his loss. So yes, he was. You are an ignorant. The Bible condemned his action. God even so, re reject him building temples. So you can be a king and you can go after your lost, but doesn't make you godly. It doesn't matter who you are. You are your name is David. Your name is Solomon. Your name is, uh, it doesn't matter. Loyalty is God. God is loyal. And people who belong to God, they must be loyal. You can go after your lost and decide to become a donkey who follow his private part, not his heart, and not what he should be. A true man, he should not be going after many women. People, they grow in a very funny, silly, stupid culture that the one who sleep with more women, he is the successful person. Well, I say to you that the man who sleep with more women, he is absolutely not successful because by time he will notice that he can't even love any women no more. Because love doesn't make anything, any, any sense for him. It's about sex. Same for the women. The more you sleep with men, the more, who is the man you, you like, you are having sex with this guy now, but yesterday was a different guy. How many images in your head of sex practice with men? Which one of them is your man? And how many of them come on coming tomorrow? So when you go after your lost, you are lost. You see, there's, there's birds. Birds, they are animals. When the spouse die, the bird, he don't go to any females. In fact, many of them, some, they even stop eating until they die. And they are birds. So God is love and love is loyalty. So if there's 8 billion people on the planet right now and there's billions of people that have already died, how is it possible for him to love everybody at the same time? I, I can't, death, I can't, I can't. Death, death is a form of love because I am thankful from my Lord that I will not live forever because imagine I am now a hundred years old or a hundred twenty. My teeth is gone. I cannot go to the bathroom. I cannot say two words. I lost my memory and I am alive. Why I want to live? What the life for? So death, death is not a bad thing. Death is a mercy. Death is love. You know, because when you grow old, too old, your family will, will, be, will have a trouble on you. You know, they have to wash you. They have to take you to the bathroom. You are sick, doctors, medicine, etc. So you become a burden in your family. The one you love them. So now it is better. It's from, the, from God wisdom, you know, for us, because we are not going to live eternity for now, it's from God wisdom is not to live more than we should. So does he love us even when we're not on earth? Like, is, he love I, us when we are not what I'm I'm trying to understand how God can love like billions of people at the same time and give them all the attention they need at the same time like, how well, is that possible I, I want to uh, like I want to give you an example uh, do you know the bees the bees bees yeah like the insects the insect yeah Okay, yeah. All right. The bees, how many, uh, how many mothers they have in the, in the colony? One. One. Everybody is just under the command of one female. Is that correct? Yeah, she controls the hive. And all, they are working in extreme harmony. Is that correct? Correct. The major reason for them to be successful is loyalty. Wow. If, so they, are, if they are not loyal, they will be killing each other. Right? But they don't. The whole colony have only one mother. And the whole colony work for one purpose, to keep the family surviving. So we call her the queen, this is what we call her, but in fact she is the mother of the babies. 
and all the babies are in love with their mother and they do everything for her so she is inside she is protected the whole colony will die to defend the mother what is this is based on this our insect if insect can do that can god <laughs> do more you would think you would hope Oh, okay. I think I'm starting to get it. Sorry? I don't think I'll ever be able to grasp it. It's beyond my grasp. No, I, I think it's very simple. This is why I gave you the example of the bees, because we can't make it more simple than this. Uh, so it doesn't matter what the number is. The number is big for you. The number is small for God. That is not even a number. You know, God don't see us a number. God, he, he see us by our names. The Lord, he said, from their fruits, you shall know them. So numbers doesn't, doesn't mean anything. Uh, loyalty, quality, and uh, fruits. All those bees, they, they, they share one thing. They give and they make honey. And they are very well organized. And their house is done by a perfect engineer. In fact, bees are better than us. Because simply, yeah, the whole family are in love. You will find a human being in the same family, they are they hate each other. Because humans are always fighting each other. Yeah, because why? Because a human being is different from insect. He is given a free will. And because you have a free will, free will can make you do good things with your will and can do bad things with your will. And this is the the point of reward. So people who believe in a free will and do good will, they will be with the Lord. And those who they are using their free will to do bad act, they will be punished and they will be doomed. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I, <laughs> I wasn't expecting to get this emotional. So what, what do you think about Islam now? You know, Islam for me is something very uh, disgusting and evil. Like, do you know that Islam teach that the man, he can beat his wife? I was in a server in a voice call earlier with them and they were talking about how this 25 year old was like, his max age of consent was 16. I was, I was so ripped out. Like they were, talk, they were joking about how many wives they could have. I just felt so uncomfortable. The entire voice call and then somebody that like i met today invited me to like join a christian server call and it just felt safe like they're not joking about women it's it's nice <laughs> all right well here you know we have always good time and we can uh, we joke we laugh but always here we share the truth uh, sometimes I make fun of myself. Joke is not a not, not a bad thing, but uh, uh, Islam is obviously is a very bad thing. There is no person he respect himself. A man who respect himself, he will not beat a woman. You know, beating a woman is a clear sign that the man himself is not self confident. And when I claim to be a prophet of God, and I claim that my God told me that the way to correct women, and I here I use the word correct between two bracket is beating them that is a clear proof that the one who come with this is nothing but a savage man he have a low iq and he is a stupid and i will explain to you why because if i have a wife let us say she is really stupid and i want to use the word stupid as it is let us say she is the stupidity itself so if i beat her how i can make a stupid person do the right thing it's impossible because she is a stupid anyway, so she will do the same bad thing again. She's stupid. So beating the person will not make him smart. You can make a person smarter by trying step by step to explain, to train, uh, to, uh, to, show, to show why it's wrong, uh, you know, and because now this person will listen to you more, but you are being kind, you are being nice, 
you are not insulting you are not uh, you know so she will listen she will learn uh, she will try her best to do better but if I beat her how that can help her and how that can help me she will hate me she might even put poison for me in my food <laughs> so the word is stupid I see it this way that the man who beat his wife he is the stupid one even yeah go ahead they made that make sense because I come from a family that my father wasn't he wasn't a kind man before my mother died so it was normal for me so when I learned about Islam and I was learning about like discipline of wives it started to make sense like maybe 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 he was doing like good like what he was supposed to with discipline because they were talking about when she disrespects you once you correct her and then the second time you leave the bed and then the third time you leave like socially like you ignore her you give her the silent treatment which was my was, that, was, that's what, a lie you know all, all what they said to you it's a lie there's no first time there's a second time you see what you see now on the screen i'm showing my screen i don't know if you see it this is a lie in the quran there's no first time there's no second time there's no third time and there's no beat him lightly and there's no leaving the bed it says jail them in their room jail them not leave the bed Muslims they lie like now you see here it says lightly you see my screen yeah okay where in the Quran in Arabic it says lightly I challenge all the Muslims in the world to come and show me where it says lightly it's not there in fact in fact the story says it clearly that a man he beat his wife until he made her skin greener than her clothing and Muhammad took the side of the man, not the women. Muhammad did not say, why you did beat her like that. He did not say, look, you made the bruises for her. Muhammad, he said, don't beat your wife the same as you beat the slaves until they die by breaking their bones. So Muhammad, he acknowledged beating women. He is the one who taught them beat them. And as you see here, it says, Aisha, she said, a lady, she came to her. She was wearing a green veil. And she complained to Aisha about her husband and showed her a green spot in her skin caused by beating. And here the Muslims are trying to justify why Aisha she is defending the women, which, which Aisha now is wrong, should not defend the women. You know, it was the habit of ladies to support each other. Uh -huh. So when Allah Messenger came, Aisha, she said, I have not seen any suffering as much as a believing woman. Look. Her skin is a greener than her clothes. And you read the whole story. Muhammad, he took the side of the man. And he never mentioned why you did beat her. <laughs> so when they say lightly and those lies and first and second, it's a big fat lie. That's scary. Well, if you like uh, your husband to beat you, well, you can be a Muslim and you enjoy it. Preferably not, no. I'd well, rather not. Don't you like to have a green skin? It's for it's it's for I'm free. Sorry. It's for free. No, apparently my father has to pay for it, so it's not. All right. So, uh, <laughs> so did you decide to leave Islam? Yeah. Okay. Um, that's good. Do you have any question for me? I can help you with. Uh, not currently. All right. Which country are you from? Uh, um, originally, my mother is English. My father is Scottish. We were in California. Then we moved to France because they hated religion. But then we moved back to England. So England. All right. It's, well, it's, I have a long, um, long history of my family telling me that religion is bull and god's not kind and god's not good and god's a lie and believe in evolution and if you ever become a christian then we disown you so a bit stressful <laughs> well you know i tell your parents the result of their teaching is showing very well in europe where drugs abuse is everywhere crimes yeah. and rape and theft because people now they don't have they have zero moral Everybody live as he wish because now they believe they are atheists. 
One of the benefits of believing in God, that society behaves, there is no sin. If we believe that theft is not a sin, rape is not a sin, so people would do whatever they want. So what your parents did is the same crime many people around the world who they are atheists did to against themselves. You go right now, like now in America, many states, they start adding the Bible back to their study. Why? Because they notice that their children are doomed. Kids, they are teenage shooting each other. The kids are taking drugs. Kids, they are, you know, uh, uh, 12 years old having sex. So the, the, the society is messed up when the atheists decide to fight God and to fight the teaching of God. So the first one who paid the price is the people who believe in this garbage. I think the biggest thing was I just felt empty. Like constantly, like my depression was so bad. And I agree with I you, just... but this is what empty do. Empty make you do drugs, empty make you do crazy stuff because you're empty. This is why you see a lot of Western, you know, like one of the things I noticed about Western, he go to Thailand, eh, the first day he go there, he wanna put a tattoo. Okay, a week after he wanna add a tattoo. Uh, he go to different country, he go to etc. He wanna have a more tattoo, a tattoo earring, ear in the earring in the ear, earring in the nose, earring in the tongue, earring in the lips, earring in the vagina, earring in the penis. Ear, ear, I mean, they have earring everywhere. I don't know how they can go through the airport. All of this because. They, yeah, all of this they are because they are empty, totally empty. Their life is lost. They don't know what to do. So he think he's bored. He don't know what to do. He think if he puts a tattoo in his leg, he will look now better. Oh, look, this is cool. And then after he put it and uh, it's used to it, he need, he need more new tattoo. It's like, you know, someone he paint himself over and over and over because he is not satisfied with who he is, which means he is very sad person. With the Christ... Okay. With the Christ, we don't go that direction. For as I say to you, I believe that I am loyal to my Lord, and my Lord, my Lord is loyal to me too. He will never betray me. He is he kept, he's keep his promise. So I do not need those stupid things to prove who I am. I prove who I am by doing things that's good. Things can help people around me. Things can be useful. Not by putting a stupid tattoo on my feet or my leg or my butt or putting a ring in my tongue. I mean, I don't know even how they can eat. People look funny and weird and stupid. But this is all, I believe, it is a sign that Satan is taking over those people. So I say to you, accept Christ so you can be stable within yourself first. You can be loyal to yourself first because, listen carefully, a person who don't is not loyal to his Lord is not loyal to himself too. Why? Because he's lost. He doesn't know what is the right thing to do. He have no loyalty. Even when you think about yourself, you are not being loyal. Because simply, you are just following temporary desire. And that is the trap. Desire is a trap. If I do things for the purpose of desire, I fail. Because this desire is temporary. As soon as I get my desire fulfilled, I notice then that I am in the quicksand. It's like somebody, when I grab something, he is so desperate to have it, but he jumped to get it. But then after he hold it with his hand, he noticed he just, he just jumped in the quicksand. So with believe in the Lord, believe in the truth, you are going to be stable. You will not be confused. You will not have a vacancy inside you. Your soul will be comfortable. You have a trust. You don't feel alone. You will never be lonely, even though you are alone. But still you are not. You are alone as a person. But if you are a believer, you will never be alone. For the Lord, he will be all, all the time with you. The Bible says, if the Lord is with me, who could be against me? Yeah, for me, it was alcohol. I... It was that empty that I just, you know, alcohol just made it feel better and I could ignore it. And then I just, it would take more and more and more. Like, I just, my tolerance kept going up and up and up because it was legal. I was a teenager and it was legal. So I didn't really understand what I was doing. So I'm still, like, I'm, I'm, I'm still very much an alcoholic. But learning about religion has made me kind of, like, 
motivated to stop because maybe there's something else that I don't need alcohol for. Like maybe, maybe that's the replacement. Maybe that's the thing I've been missing. Well, you see, you, you still you are thinking about things in the wrong way. We are not looking for a replacement. This is not should be should not be a replacement. We are not saying I'm going to believe in God to replace my alcohol. Well, God is not an alcohol. God is not going to make me drunk. God will make me awake. So I'm not going to replace God by uh, alcohol by God. I am going to go to what is right. This is not about replacement. And alcohol, again, is just because you feel you are lost and you are, and, and it's a sign of being spoiled too. You know, a child who is spoiled. I mean, your family, your parents, they claim that they are good people, but yet you are a teenage and you're drinking and they don't say nothing about it. Uh, I, I, I don't want to be insulting, but your but your parents are an idiots, both of them. You know, if, if you are my, like, if you are my daughter, you will never see the alcohol in your room. You will never even touch it. You know, yeah, you will never. But if you have parents who don't care really, they are hippies and they are stupid, then you will end where you end. So I I advise you not to think about this thing that okay I'm going to look for religion. Christianity is not a religion. We are not. Christianity is the truth, and the truth is not a religion. Truth that God is the only one who loves you, the only one who can save you. And because of the love of God, you can be in love with men who love you. And because of the love of God, he can be in love with you too. But he has to be a godly man too. If you go and find a man who is just a lost person, atheist in the street, he will never love you. He is the same as your parents. He is looking for a partnership. Journey for them is journey in the train. So I don't want to go alone. I find a female. Oh, she is cute. I like her. She like me. Let us join bed together. Oh, we have a baby. We call her whatever. And now we have Amber. Hey, Amber, go drink alcohol. Me and your parents, we are going vacation. You are a teenage now. Go have sex with your friends. This is not parents and this is not family. Those are people living like animals and they will end like animals. So for us, I'm, I'm using a harsh language with you because I'm just being honest with you. So uh, uh, for us as a Christians, we don't believe in religion. We will never follow our religion. We are following the Messiah. He is the truth. He is a savior. So if you are looking to be saved and not to be empty and not to feel alone and not to feel you are left alone, then the Messiah is the only one who can save you. So what's the difference between what you just said and religion? I thought I thought they were the same. No. Religion is an idea. It can be false. It can be uh, some have a truth in it. But uh, uh, Christianity is not an idea. Christ is not an idea. Christ is a real person. And because he's a real person, so what he is, is not a religion. By definition, religion is a group of people who believe in something. This is true. But in Christianity, it's not just a group of people who live, or sorry, believe in something. It's just a group of people who live something. And that is the love of God, who they are loyal to Him, and they do their best to be close to Him. That's why the Lord, He says, Be holy like your Father. Be holy like your Father, which is uh, kind of an impossible mission but because the messiah he wanted us to be the best we can he asked us to do the impossible for nothing is impossible with god so if we have faith we can reach the point of impossible so this is why i say to you if you believe in christ even though you might think you are weak you might i will tell you myself when i start speaking about islam my english is funny it's not even, um, I don't, I mean, I don't, I cannot even claim until now I speak good English. People laugh at me because I make mistakes when I speak. Uh, yet, all of those things did not stop me from accomplishing my mission. So I, I am now an author. I have many books in many languages. My books translated to all languages in the world, Chinese, Russian, Bulgarian, uh, Albanian, uh, Indonesian, you, you know, Chinese, you name it. So from a person who hardly can speak a little bit of English to explain what he's trying to say to a person who wrote books 
and people around the world listen to him. Where is my confidence coming from? If I don't have faith, I cannot accomplish anything. That's why I say to you, we don't have a religion, we have a Christ. So I believe in Christ, I believe in my mission, I believe that if the Lord is with me, who could be against me? No language is going to be an obstacle in front of me. People making fun of me, making mistakes, who care? I know that I'm making mistakes, that even blessing for me. Why? Because the one who don't make mistakes, he do not know what is right. So I learn from my mistakes to be a better person. But there's people, they enjoy making mistakes and they live mistakes and they live mistakes and they claim it's right. They claim it's true. So with the Christ, you will be able to overcome your mistakes, your weakness, you will be confident, and you will be successful. And this is the difference between somebody have religion, which is just rituals like Muslims do, pray five times a day. I mean, what is that? If God is true, you know, you can pray to him any time in your heart. You do not need to go in a certain time. Even Jesus says, if you will pray, you go to your closet. Don't pray like the hypocrite who go in the corner so everybody can see them. It was always like, uh, that was the other thing is they, they were talking about you to be a Muslim, you have to pray five times a day. Like, well, if God is God and God is God, why do I only have to pray five times? Why does it have to be a certain type? Why can't I just talk to and him? And you have to pray in a certain language too, which is not yours. <laughs> that, make it, that make it more stupid. It's like a chimpanzee trying to be a parrot, you know? That is may, even, even more funny. I never understood that. It just it just felt like it felt like a chore. And I feel like praying shouldn't feel like a chore to learn another language to pray five times a day. When I could just like yell at the sky like, Hey, are you there? Like, can you can can you can you can you help me with this? If like God if God is God and God is God, God should understand that. Like he doesn't need Arabic to understand me. You know, what if somebody is a mute? He cannot pray? <laughs> so so God, you know, when we say uh, what, God things. What can God do if God is God? That makes no sense. Like if God is God and God can do everything and God is omnipresent, omnipotent, then God can do whatever God wants to do. You see, Islam is just a, a like a chain of stupid stories. And that's why Muslims, they don't even dare to debate us. I invite you here always to stay and join us. And if you know Muslims, invite them here. And you will see how Muslims, they don't make no sense when they try. I don't want... I, I would like you to see how stupid Islam is firsthand. So we hope soon we will have a Muslim to join us. And you will see right away that Muslims, they are big mouth. They shout, they are loud, but they are like a drum. One needle will make the drum go boof. You know, this is how I see Muslims. They are like a drum. Too much noise, but they are empty. They're all ritual. Yeah, it's a, it's not even ritual. It's just a stupid ritual. What ritual? You see, like Muhammad, he did rituals. What he do? Muhammad, he jump with water, have dead dogs. To do what? To do rituals. How in the world that is a ritual? Dead dogs, women of blood from period, and garbage, stinky garbage. All of this because Muhammad, now he want to prepare himself to pray to Allah. How in the world a person, it's obviously that Muhammad is mentally ill person, suffering from mental illness. Uh, imagine now, I'm going to meet God, you know? Let us say, let us make it simple, not God. So let us say I'm going to meet a woman, huh? uh, like uh, I like her. I'm thinking to marry her. So I decide to become a clean. So what I do? I jump in a water, have dead dogs, and women blood from period, and stinky garbage, and I do shampoo with it, and I'm singing now, la 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 la, I'm going to meet the girl, la 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 la, and now after half hour of washing myself with such a beautiful mix of shampoo, I go and meet her. So this is the guy who wanna go and meet his God. After <sighs> taking shower with dead dogs and women of blood from period and a stinky garbage. What? Yeah, it's in front of you. Don't see it on the screen. Oh, I see. It. I just can't comprehend the. I just yeah. Okay. Um, yeah.
So this is the this is the guy who was your prophet for two days. <laughs> two days, yeah. I lasted. <laughs> I advise you to try it. By the way, you can find some dead dogs somewhere, and you can get uh, administration. I mean, you are a woman already, <laughs> and uh, yeah. you can get some garbage from your neighbors or your mom or whatever in the kitchen. Uh, be sure they are stinky. You know, like they are living there for a few days, and then mix them in your bathtub and sit down, take a shower. Okay, enjoy it. I'm sure you will be a very holy person. I think I'll pass. Well, I advise your... you to do it. I heard Muslims saying this is very healthy. It doesn't sound very healthy. Well, I will explain to you why it's healthy. Okay. First of all, uh, okay. let us focus in dead dogs. Dead dogs. <laughs> yeah, dead dogs. The nice things about dead dogs. The, the benefit, number one, they are dead. They don't bite you. Ma. <laughs> See? Number two... You can use their teeth to brush your back. Uh -huh. Number three, you can use their hand. They have nails. You can use it to brush your and their feet to take the dead skin. Now, you can use the tail, which is the tail of the dead dog, to push away the mosquitoes or any fly because the smell is so bad. Now, the water is so dirty. So now you can use it as a, like a, as a fan. See, it just this is just from the dead dog. So what about the other things like... The women period, imagine you are just swimming in a jacuzzi and the water is going crazy around you and the smell of a blood of women menstruation all over. Oof, that's amazing. And the dogs smell too. The dead dogs. I mean, dead dogs, by the way, when they die, oof, they smell so good. All right. So like, oh. I, 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 like, I, I, I experienced that way and myself. It smells so beautiful. Especially when the worms, they come from his belly and they are by like a thousands and they are eating his flesh. Unbelievable. The view is so beautiful and so delicious. It makes you feel hungry, actually. You want to eat with them. So all of this. And then in the top of that, you have a stinky garbage. And the stinky garbage alone can be a mix of many, many, many beautiful things. As an example, you know, barbecue, bones, uh rotten tomato rotten eggs uh the poop of the cat it's a lot of fertilizer if you study science you will know that all those things will make your skin shiny and you will become so beautiful i prefer to be ugly at that point huh? i explain my case it's your fault guys be my witness i try to tell her the benefit of such a deal huh? <laughs> people don't want to listen. Yeah, what I can do? I mean, you cannot, you cannot explain to people more than this. I did my best. I just can't understand it. I'm so ignorant. Yeah. I can't understand it. If there is any Muslim when I come in here and tell this lady here, why your prophet taking a shower like that? Please so she, do. I, yeah, she, so she can go back to Islam. Anyone want to do it? I need answers. <laughs> Well, the answer, I can make a commercial about this if you have money. That will make, like, I will make a shampoo. And then, like a woman, she go in the bathtub. And there is dead dog in the bathtub. And the worms are coming out of his belly. And then she opened the water in the top of him. And then she go yeah. and she grab some menstruation rags. And she throw it in the water. And then she go to the kitchen and bring big bag of trash and garbage, stinky garbage, and she empty it in the bath. And then she take off her clothes, for sure with a towel on her, because we are very considered Muslims. And then she jump in the water. And now she breathe and she say, the smell, subhanAllah, so beautiful. Prophet Muhammad used to do that, so I'm doing so. I will sell a lot of shampoo like that in one day. No, thank you. I'll pass. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, until now, can you tell us one thing they made you th they really believe in Islam for a second? I'm, and I'm trying to understand why in the world anyone want to believe in the garbage of Muhammad for a second. Um, they told me that um, I had no understanding. So I came from a completely atheist background. No, I didn't know where God was. I had the name. I had the name of the Bible. Didn't know what it was. I didn't even know what Genesis was about. Like I knew nothing about God. And I how, how Muslim, old are you, Amber? If you don't mind to say. Uh, I'm twenty-two. You're very old. 
Yeah, so, like, this is, like, all new to me. So, my, my entire life is, like, God's bad, God's bad, God's bad, ignore God, don't do God. God's bad, God's bad, ignore it. So, when I, I, when I go into alcoholism in my teenage years, and, like, nothing was fulfilling me, like, I am, like, deep into alcoholism because of that. So, I was like, okay, so maybe my parents were wrong about this religion thing. So, I, like, I set up religions. And I searched at monotheism and like Islam was something that came up. I'm like, okay, Islam. So that, that, it's a Yeah, but what, uh, what monotheism mean? You know, more than monotheism, it's just an idea. There's a temple in San Francisco. They worship Satan, Satan. Well, this monotheism. So if somebody believes in one God, it doesn't make any difference if I believe in one God or ten God. The, the, the question is, are they true gods or not? One God, two God, three God, five God, seven God. What is this? You know, are we are we going after how many chicken is in the in the cube? So, the idea of many monotheism does not give a value for any faith. It is about if it's true, or it is not. So let us say, he, he you know, uh, there is a group of people like in India. There is they have thirty five million God. I'm not rejecting them because they are 35 million. I'm rejecting them because the idea they believe in like, it is stupid. How was the, like, I joined, sorry to interrupt you, but I joined a Muslim server. Like, that was the first religion I heard of. So I joined a Muslim server and I said, okay, so monotheism. And they told me that God is God and God is all powerful. And how are those three God? And say, like, how it, and they told me that if God equals God, then Jesus can't um go against God, and like the spirit would interfere with God. And like, at the time, me not knowing anything about Christianity, like, given I knew nothing about Christianity, how that God, made sense. listen, listen, Amber, those Muslims are a bunch of dummies. How God will go against God if God is one in Christianity anyway? Because in Christianity, we believe, no, don't, we don't believe in three gods, we believe in one God. Christianity, the Trinity, is a three percent one God, not three gods. So the Messiah said, I and the Father are one. He didn't say, I am God, He is God, the Holy Spirit is God. No. So they are lying, first of all. Secondly, the Messiah always, He says, say it clearly, that the let your will be done. The will of the Son is the will of the Father. He never go against it. In fact, it is in Islam they have contradiction. As an example, Allah in Islam, he says something. Muhammad, he says something else. Which one the Muslim they take? They take what Muhammad said versus what Allah said. But you will not find in Christianity that Jesus said something is against the will of the Father. And you will not find something Jesus did against the will of the Father. In fact, always the whole Bible is so clear that everything the Messiah have done is according to the will of the Father. So Muslims, they lie. This is what the Muslims do. They lie and they hunt for someone who is ignorant. Someone who do not know, as you said. But you should you should search. This is my advice to you. You said now you are 22, right? Yeah. I'm 17. So if you are a person who likes to be successful in life, you need to search and study whatever people say to you. You don't take things just because somebody said to you. Study it, search it, check it out, see it's true. See, but that made no sense to me because they said they argued with me about like so if like when they told me that I researched the Trinity and it said three persons in one God, I was like, okay, cool. So Christians study one God also. So I asked them that, and then they came back with well, when Jesus was praying. When he was about to be crucified, he said, not my will, but yours. And then that kind of stopped me a bit. Because if Jesus has his will and God has his will, I got confused at that. You see, Jesus said, me and the Father is one. Uh, he said, but your will be done. And that yes. confused me. Why, why that would confuse you? Because if um, if Jesus has a will and God has a will, then Jesus is rejecting his own will. No, 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 no. You see, the Messiah as a person, he's a person. He's a yeah. person. So he is the one in on the earth, the Father, he sent him. So he have a will and the Father have a will. But the question is, is the will of the Son is against the will of the Father? No. That's why Jesus said, let your will the word father mean what 
The word father means authority. That means the son is always obedient to the father. This is what the okay. word father means. So as, as, as soon as the Messiah, he say father, that means the Messiah is always obedient to the father. You understand? I will not call yeah. someone a father unless he have, a, he have an authority. So Christianity teach that the Messiah is born of the father, not the father is born of the, of the son. So when Jesus said, not my will, was that his human side? Like, this this, is, not, this is not about the human side. This is about that the son, he goes down to earth for a mission. The son, he knew what they will do. And the son, yeah. he always do what the father want. That's why Jesus says in the whole Bible, everything I say to you, everything I do to you, is being told to me and given to me by the father. So the Messiah... All his mission is about the father, what the father want. The, with the separation, there's no separation ex exists between the will of the father and the will of the son. It's always in total agreement. So if Jesus says, let your will be done, he's not saying, I have will different from your will. He's saying the opposite. He's saying, I am in total agreement in whatever the father he want to happen. Okay, that makes sense. It's, sorry. Like if I'm talking to you, you say you want to go to now. Do you like to go to the restaurant? I say whatever you want. Does that mean I have different will from your will? Uh, say that again. If you say you want to go to this restaurant, this restaurant, or that restaurant, and then I say to you, whatever you like, we go. Does that mean I have different will from yours? No, it means I decide. Yeah, but well, that's what Jesus said. Let your will be done. So. The will of the Father is what is going to be done anyway, no matter what. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, so the Messiah, he knew what they would do to him. They will crucify him. At the end of the day, Father, if you can, if you, if you can keep this cup away from me, but the Messiah, he understood that this cup should happen, that you will be done. So the son is speaking to the father. The son is discussing with the father. And the son, he receive the answer from the father. So let your will be done. So the three persons is then discussing, but the will is God. The, you see, the, the Bible defined even the Messiah himself as the Logos. The Logos is the will of God the power of God, the ability of God, and that is the Messiah. So the, the, it's, it's like you know, you, you as a one person, do you think in your head, and you have many opinion in the same time in your head? No, I usually only have one. Okay, that, to make it simple, you said that you, you, were, you felt you are empty and you are looking for a religion. Yeah. All right. Well, this is many opinion. You have an opinion inside you that you are an atheist. Your mom, your dad told you something. Then other opinion come to your head. And now I'm looking for a religion because I feel empty. So now inside your head, you are thinking about, I'm looking. I'm not sure there's Islam, there's a Christianity, there's atheism. But all of those are ideas in one head. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. Be before you reach the point of decision, your will was to look. That was the will. Wow. And then, and then you make the decision to choose. That is the will too. Right? It's like going <laughs> shop. When you go shopping, you will to go to the market, to the bazaar, to go to Amazon. That was the will. But then when you go there, there's many options. And then you do choose from those options. One of them or two or whatever you have. So you make a decision and your will is every step of life and this is what happened with jesus on earth he is on earth there's obstacle in front of him there's people who don't understand him there's people they are you know this is why jesus says forgive them father they don't know what they are doing so the messiah always is in connection with the father about what should be done and what is the right thing to do it 
the Muslim don't understand how that can be. Well, if God is God, there's nothing is impossible for God. So if Jesus can do, raise people from death, and the Muslim accept that, why Jesus cannot be God and man in the same time? If man cannot raise people from death, then Jesus should not be able to raise people from death. If man cannot control nature, then Jesus should not be able to control nature. Jesus make the blind see. Jesus can tell you what you hide. Jesus can tell you the future. Jesus can heal the leper. I mean, who is this Jesus? Why he can do all those things, but he is just a man for those Muslims. So they cannot explain to us how Jesus can do that, except saying that Allah gave him the power. But they can't explain to us why Allah gave him all this power, including to create. I mean, if, if I want to prove that Jesus is prophet, I do not need to make Jesus make people come from the grave. <laughs> not, none of those is needed. One miracle, okay, here we go. I made the blind see. Okay, I healed the liver. But to create to create the creatures from mud by breathing into them, that's mean I'm God, I'm creator. To resurrect people from death, that mean I'm God. So now if the Muslim is when they say that Jesus was given the power from Allah, well that mean Allah he shared his divine with Jesus. For what Jesus did is only the power of divine. So if Allah, he gave Jesus the power of divine to make us to believe that he is a prophet, he failed. He caused us to believe, yeah, because he caused us to believe that Jesus is God. <laughs> Correct? Makes no sense. Yeah, because if Jesus cannot raise people from death, and Jesus cannot overcome death, and Jesus cannot create, and Jesus cannot heal, no Christian will believe that Jesus is God. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, I see what you're saying. So, if if Allah is the one who gave him this power, well, Allah is the one who made him God then. <laughs> because no Christian would believe in Jesus if he cannot do those things. So, if if Jesus is not God, but Allah says God gives Jesus God powers, but God is not Jesus, but Jesus has God powers, Jesus can't be God, but God is God and Jesus has God powers. Therefore, a human can't do God things. But Jesus can do God things, therefore Jesus is God. But Jesus is a human. Jesus can't be God because Jesus is a human. So God's not Jesus and Jesus is God. It's confusing. I know. I have a cross eyes now because of your speech. <laughs> so, the, so the Muslims, the Muslims' idea of Jesus is very funny and very silly. They can't explain why Jesus can. Like, no, there's Zachary Naik. He says, Brother Fitter. In the time of Jesus, there was medical advance. Uh, in the time of Jesus, medical was advanced. Really? Why? I mean, two thousand years ago, medicine was advanced, and Muhammad came six hundred years after. Medicine was not. So, they, uh, as if Jesus was giving medicine, like somebody told you that Jesus, he gave bills. He take this bill three times three times a day. He dead man. Let me give you this bill. Drink it three times a day. You will be fine. Okay, we'll come back to life. Look how stupid they are. They can't explain what? why Jesus have all those power, and yet Jesus is just a prophet, and they're a prophet. He died, he faint. The, I call him the fainty prophet. Muhammad, he faint every five minutes. Muhammad have diarrhea. Muhammad, he shit in his pant. Muhammad, he cannot go to the bathroom. Muhammad, he is like he is illusional. He imagined things. He in the black magic. Muhammad died by poison. So all those things, horrible things, happened to Muhammad. But Jesus, if he wave his hands. Tens of thousand people, they healed from disease. Why? That was an X-ray? They can't explain. Oh, I, I don't know about the black magic one. Yeah, he, was, they, they, he was bewitched. He was bewitched. What? He was bewitched. You don't know that? A prophet, God can't be bewitched. I thought Muhammad was like... He like, I thought Muhammad was like he had protection of God. And if you have the protection no, he, of God, no, he was he was bewitched. He would go like, "This is Aisha. So you, see, you see my screen." He didn't have protection of God then. Yeah, he don't even have a protection of uh, Joe Biden. So, uh, <laughs> one, once the prophet was bewitched, who talking Aisha, the wife, the daughter, the, the the one in the age of his grand grand granddaughter. Once the prophet was bewitched, so he began to imagine that he had done a thing which in fact he had not done. So we are talking about Jesus, he made the blind see, 
And Muhammad is now, his eyes is open, but he sees things is not there. <laughs> hey, Prophet, what are you doing? Uh, uh, I, uh, I'm, uh, yeah, what, what, uh, give me the, the thing there. Uh, um, Prophet, you know, there's nothing there. What are you, what are you, like, hold on, there's a, like, you will, you will fill over the cliff, the cliff, the Prophet, hold on. Uh, no, really? Uh, yeah, the Prophet is bewitched. This is the Prophet, and this is Sahih Bukhari, and this is very authentic. And even the hadith says that the Prophet, when he was bewitched, he started imagining that he is having sexual intercourse with his wives, but in fact he did not. Which means even his sex was false. I Hi. wish I wish there is an okay. open I wish there was an open camera when Muhammad was doing that. That would be fun. I want to see what he was doing. <laughs> I mean he's a prophet Wait. of God. And now I'm he not... imagined himself having sex, but in fact, he did not. You, you know those videos of dogs humping dry air? I imagine it looks a little bit like that. Dogs doing what? You, you, you know when dogs will, like, they, they'll hump dry air? They'll just, like, do that motion? Because something triggers their hormones to do that motion? I imagine it looks something like that. I don't know what is that, really. I'm not sure. Dogs, I don't understand you. Sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. My English is not so. Sometimes is uh, is messed up. Certain scents will make a dog act like they're mating. Ah, uh, okay, okay, but I see. Thing, so they will just look like they're mating with the air. Yeah, this is exactly what it's... happened to. Is this exactly what happened to Muhammad? He is a <laughs> he is a dog. He imagined himself meet mating, but in fact, there's no there's no there's no female dog in front of him. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I never thought about it this way. Thank you. You just give me an idea about the dogs. All right. Oh, so, so here you see all of those, like as an example, you see the screen, right? Yeah. Well, I uh, this remember, this was your prophet for two days, you know? So the prophet, <laughs> the prophet continued for such and such period, imagining that he had boom, boom with his wives. In fact, he did not. That is the dog we're talking about. Lovely, wonderful. Yeah. All right, my my uh, uh, dear sister, I I invite you to believe in Jesus, and I hope you will accept and have faith. Otherwise, following this garbage cult is a big mistake. And I am glad you decided to leave it. But now you better read the Bible carefully, and I invite you to believe in the Lord. I appreciate it. I, I also appreciate you talking to me for so long because I imagine other people are waiting. Yeah, actually, I'm talking to you because there's no, I don't see any Muslim coming. Otherwise, if a Muslim came, I would throw you outside immediately because a Muslim is my customer. You are not. <laughs> like, like, like my husband would have done when you wanted a new model. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, like, no, I'm glad that you called and you left Islam. You decided to leave Islam. I advise you to sit here and... Uh, Watch us what we do. See how Muslims are being so stupid when they defend Muhammad. And as you see, Muhammad, even his sex is false. I mean, the guy, he don't even have witnesses for sex. Even his wives was not there. Wow. Okay. There's no women there. The guy was having sex with who? The Muslims. So Muhammad was having sex with who? The goat? <laughs> It's in front of you. I'm not making things up. In the in the in the in the same way, if Muhammad he cannot even recognize the the difference between what is real and what is not, how we can trust him that this guy is receiving? Uh, he's seeing an angel. This guy he see things. He imagine things. He's delusional. How we can trust him to be a prophet of God? So. I, I, I need a Muslim to come up and defend this. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I invite all the Muslims to join us. Do we have any Muslim who would like to join us? Because here we go. Uh, the, the lady here, she decided to leave Islam. And I invite you to join us so you can bring her back to Islam. And she will believe in the okay. Prophet who imagined himself having sex. But in fact, he did not. Because this is a good habit. Because this way we can reduce the number of babies in the world. Because now we imagine we have a woman. But there's no woman. This way, there's no sexual disease transmitted between the people, and there's no more babies, and no more global warming, and this is how we can save the world. And now I explain to you why Prophet Muhammad, he imagined himself having sex with a woman who is not there, simply, it's just to save the world. Thank you very much. Perfect. Yeah.
Anything else? I think that's it. Thank you. Uh, all right. You're welcome. <laughs> Sit and invite your friends if you want. And if there is a Muslim, we would like to hear him. I don't. I don't think they have the courage. They banned my friend for questioning them. So I don't. I don't. I don't think the Muslims that I know will be willing. Well, no, the Muslims are busy now. They are imagining themselves having sex with their wives. In fact, it's not there. So, and this is what they will do in their discord. They will imagine themselves debating Christian prince, but he is not there. It's a habit, you know. And this is the only way to win the argument and to win the debate. But you're right here. I'm not here. I'm there. Are you there or here? I'm both. Oh, okay. No, it's because in English, you, see, you you speak to somebody, he says, are you there? You say to him, well, no, um, I, I say, I'm here. Are you there? Or in, what? in English and in French. So, um, I'm here, meaning I'm here presently, like I'm talking to you, I'm here talking to you. Uh -huh. But also, I'm there on the call, like I'm there with you on the call. So, it can mean both. Like, I am both there with you on I the think call and this I'm here. I think based on what you just said to me, you qualified to become a Muslim prophet. You are here and there in the same time. Perfect. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think you are being I think you are being bewitched now. <laughs> May Allah bless you. <laughs> hey Sarah, how are you doing? We have Sarah. We have Abu. Abu he came first. Abu you are a Muslim? No, no, I'm not. I'm not Sufi. I'm a ah. friend of the Lord. I just wanted to introduce uh, uh, Alisa. Um, uh, she lives in a dangerous country, so we want to protect her. But Alisa, she has questions I'm, for you. I see a name. It's called Sarah. Yes. Uh, Is that her? She's now going to be Alisa. Yes. Alisa, all right. Yeah. So she has, uh, if you don't mind, I'll ask uh, the questions on her behalf and maybe she, if she wants to respond. She was asking about the stone that is floating in the sky when Muslims pray, and also the stones that people throw in Makkah. The stone floating in the sky? What do you mean? Apparently, there is. Uh, there are Muslims that say that. Uh, um, let me see. There's a stone in the sky that uh, that you uh, when Muslims pray, uh, like a Kaaba in the sky. Ah, ah, the, ah, ah, the, the Al Bayt Al Ma'mur. Yeah, Al Bayt Al Ma'mur. Okay. All right. What about it? So, I myself have never heard of this, and she was asking if you can explain that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it, it is it's just a stupid idea that there is a house, Allah, He have a Kaaba in the heaven, and this Kaaba, there is 70,000 angels, they go inside it and leave, uh, uh, they, they, like they never, they never leave from it, you know, every day. So, you will see here. Uh, they will go to the Bayt al Ma'mur. Do you see my screen? Yes. All right. So this is now Muhammad. He entered to that area and he saw four rivers coming from that house underneath of it, under the Luta tree. There's a tree which is, uh, you can walk underneath of it for a distance of 100 years journey. And this tree have uh, leaves. They look like elephant ears or very huge, but they are made of gold. So Muhammad described it, and then he says, two river and two hidden river, I said, Jibreel, what are these rivers? He said, two, uh, two hidden rivers are the rivers of paradise. And as regard the two manifest ones are the Nile and Euphrates. Then the Bayt and Ma'mur, this is the house you are talking about, which means the build house, was raised up to me, like appeared. And I said, O Gabriel, what is this? He replied, this is Bayt al-Ma'mur. 70,000 angels enter it daily. After they come out, they never come again. So those angels, they come, they go from there, they go inside this house, they never come back again. Where they go, we do not know. So this is what she is talking about. Wow, I have never heard of it. Yeah, and okay. The other thing is the stone that people throw at this tower. I think it's called Arafat Tower in Makkah. Yeah, this is the house of Shaitan. Right. Yeah, it's it's just an, uh, an, an a pagan religion. People used to practice it before Islam. 
and uh, uh, this uh, this stone uh, is like the the shaitan now is became more high tech so he abrogated his house let me search for some pictures um, and this Beit al Mamur is in Surah Atur Ayah 4. Is that true? In, Quran. Uh, in Surah what? See, you wrote Atur. Atur, Surah Atur. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, you see, the, the Muslim themselves do not know uh, what is the uh, Beit al Mamur is about. So everyone, he give you his idea uh, and uh, give you his reasoning. And the Quran uh, doesn't really give us a clear idea what, what this is about. Uh, but let me show you first. We mentioned uh, uh, the Arafah you mentioned. And we go, we go back to this uh, thing. I'm just trying to find... the pictures to show you how they change it all right where is the pictures all right we found some pictures but i'm trying to find an old pictures just to show you how muslims they abrogate their god and their religion okay here we go uh, <clears throat> You see my screen? Yes. So this is the house of Shaitan, the way it used to be about a hundred years ago. Do you see it? Yes. Small, tiny, you know, not long time ago, that's what it was. People, they come and they throw a bunch of rocks, and this is how they heard the feeling of Shaitan. Now, the oil came... And Saudi Arabia became rich and they are making a lot of money from Hajj. So now the house of Shaitan cannot fit for all those millions are coming. So now we abrogate and this is what we have today. <laughs> it's the, it's looked like a sheep of Noah, the, the shape of Noah, what is this? <laughs> the Muslims house of Shaitan get abrogated. And this is not only that, this is many floors underground, by the way. You, you, you might see it this way. It looked like, I don't know, it looked like a ship, really. But there's many floors. Let us see if we can show you more pictures. Here we go. This is this, the, the third floor, I think. Uh, this is the first floor, maybe. Yeah, so now they have many floors. And the small, tiny uh, column made of rocks now became concrete. There's many of them. There's one here, one there, one there. There's the floors. People, they go like, choose which one you want to throw the rocks. And here, this is the second floor. I mean, that's amazing, beautiful, brother. What is this? Most Muslims, what is this? What is this, man? So, even their religion is impacted by the money. And they abrogate. Look, all those Muslims, they want to throw rocks at the shaitan. The shaitan, he's there. This is kind of stupid. Yeah? They build the house of Satan, basically. Yeah, but uh, but imagine, I mean, how stupid Shaitan to be staying there. And now, and now the small, tiny little column made of rocks became this massive building. You know, look at this. So the people, they wow. throw rocks, and then the rocks, they go down, and then there is, like, go all the way to the basement, and there's a trucks. They take the rocks again, and they place them in the same place in the top, so people, they grab them and throw them again. In this stupidity. Yes, very, yeah. And this very is good. and this is how the this the house of Shaitan was to use used to to be in the old days. You know, look how it is. So from this tiny ugly stuff to a concrete elevators, oil, oil make a lot of different. Anything else? Ah, now you said to me Al Baytul Ma'mur. Yes. All right. <clears throat> yes, we wanted to share with Christians and Muslims about this because most, most people don't know about Beit al Mamur. Yeah, so Al Beit al Mamur, as you see, the Quran did not mention much about it. It just say the build house, which is that nobody knows really. And then uh, all, all the fiction stories, 
as you see here they are adding uh, the house over the heaven parable to, to, to Kaaba uh, at Mecca continuously visited by angels but nobody can explain to us why even angels are visiting it what is that what is that for even angels they have rituals to visit Kaaba there why Allah have two houses you know one house is not enough what is that for so it's just a stupid idea you know they're very obsessed about stones and physical no you see the more I add mystery to a religion the more I make people afraid and they have fear you see so now if I say to you there's things 70,000 angels go inside this room and they don't come back again and they like you know I, I give you a lot of ideas a lot of images then you will feel you are too much intimidated by this God who look even he have Kaaba there and the angels are subdued and the 70,000 every day <laughs> now if we think about the number you will see how stupid Muhammad is because let us do a little calculation if 70,000 they come to visit this house every day and they never come back Muhammad was exists for 1400 years ago and I assume that this is exist even before Adam so if we go on and say let us say seven eight thousand years so let us say 70,000 angel a day or let us do that first I don't know if any one of you is good in mathematics I'm not good in mathematics uh, so if we say 7,000 years x 360 days that will make it what to uh, 200 billion 200 yeah, billion 200 more billion, 250 yeah. 250 and 20 something like that right so right. and then we go and we x that to 70 correct <laughs> 70,000 I mean look at the number I mean all of those are angels in heaven doing this what, what they are doing there I mean the heaven turned to be very busy it is I assume that there's a problem for housing in heaven are they renting anyway stupid religion anything else well Alisa, do you have any other questions? Um, I'm just a lady. Hi. Yes, hi, Siti. How are you, Alisa? How are you doing? I'm fine. How are you doing? Why are you are doing fine? What's wrong? What? Why are you are doing fine? What's wrong? I don't like to see <laughs> people. I don't like to see people doing fine. I'm a Muslim. <laughs> it makes me upset to see people doing fine. I'm angry. Really? Yeah, <laughs> so what do you want to say to us? Um, I want to ask, I want to first say, I didn't hear you, what? Lila, for the help. <clears throat> I just want to first thank uh, our Lila, the help. Okay. Uh, I want to thank you also for the hard work. Uh, oh, I was asking because. Uh, there are some Muslims who are saying, uh, other Muslims who are saying that the angel, uh, that uh, Christians don't have it in jail. Uh, but in the Quran, it says that uh, to believe in the gospel of the Torah. So I wonder which angel are they talking about? I mean, whether was, was it any other angel? Well, why, why do they say that? Well, you know, Muhammad is just a stupid person because if he have little intelligence, he will not use the word Injil. The word Injil is a Greek word. And imagine my book is in Arabic and my, the name of the book is in German. <laughs> that doesn't make sense because the, the name of the book is to explain the book, right? Mm -hmm. So if I say Quran, <laughs> Quran mean reading, which is does not explain the Quran really, because Quran supposedly came to Muhammad as a recitation. So Quran is a wrong name for the wrong book. However, Injil 
it's a word meaning the good news which is the Greek word so now when Muhammad he chosen this word to give that the name of the book that means the book itself must be in Greek it cannot be any other other so what Muhammad is talking about obviously he took the Gospel of John and he considered that book is the book Jesus he gave this is why he is using the Greek word for it uh, and by doing that that is a contradiction for Muhammad in the Quran why because in the Quran Muhammad he said we never send the messenger except in the tongue of his own people Mm -hmm. And if Jesus is sent to the uh, to the Jews, then the book have to be in Hebrew. Should not be in any other language. If Jesus was sent only for the Jews, and then we have not sent, we sent not a messenger. And this is chapter fourteen, verse four, uh, except with the language of his people, in order to make the message clear for them. That makes sense. Finally, the Quran making sense. But look what happened here. The Quran itself debunked the Quran. The Quran itself saying that the message will never be clear unless it is in the language of the people. So how a Muslim, I don't know which country are from, but how Muslims who are from Pakistan, from India, from Hulunulu, uh, from Lululu, how they will understand the stupid Quran if the Quran itself saying the reason we give it to you in the language of the own people so they can understand which means the message will not be fit for the nation unless the message in their tongue so how Muhammad can be a messenger for all mankind if the Quran in Arabic and remember Muhammad he claimed that Allah he asked Allah to give him seven Quran in seven reading why because his people are not capable of doing it which mean understanding the religion so if the small tiny village of Mecca need seven Quran in seven dialect in order to understand the Quran so how the Quran can be clear for country like India have more than 400 languages see yeah. so the Quran and Islam debunk Islam Islam is a stupid cult uh, all what happened here Muhammad Muhammad cannot recite the verse twice correctly which mean I say something today tomorrow I say I try to recite the same verse I add words I take words so the the people they notice that there is this is not what he said yesterday so now Muhammad you want to cover his lies so he claimed, this is why the Muslims, when they, they fought about it, they fought about this issue. Two Muslims, they were reciting the Quran. He said to him, the Prophet did not say it this way. The other guy said, no, he said it that way. They fight, and then they went to, the, to Muhammad, and Muhammad he said to the first one, tell me how you, how you say it. And uh, the guy, he said, and he's asked the other guy, okay, tell me how you heard it. He told him, he told him, both of you are right. Don't you know that Allah... I ask Allah to give me the Quran in seven ways. And this is telling us that the Muslim, they never heard this before. Until Muhammad, he mentioned, until this fight happened. And now Muhammad trying to cover up why he is reciting the same verse in different ways and different words. Simply, he claimed that he asked Allah to give him the Quran in seven ways because his people are not capable of doing it. And if the Arab are not capable of doing that in one Arabic language, how an Indian can do that like Zakir Naik? <laughs> Here you see the story. Do you see the story on the screen? Yes. I heard Hashim ben Hakim, blah, 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 reciting Surah Al-Furqan in a way different than of mine. Allah Messenger had taught me in different way. So I was about to quarrel with him during the prayer, but I waited for until he finished, and then I tied his garment around his neck and sized him by it and brought him to Allah Messenger. And I said, I have heard him reciting Surah Al Furqan in a way different from the way you taught me. 
The Prophet, he ordered me to, re to release him and asked me to recite it. When I recited Allah Prophet, he said, okay, it's revealed this way. Then he asked me to recite it. He recited, he said, okay, it's revealed this way. So now there's two guys are fighting about what? About they are reciting Quran, supposedly the same chapter, but there's totally different words. Muhammad mm -hmm. he said to the first one, oh, it's this is correct. The other one he recited in the other way. He said to him, this is correct too. They look at him, they said, what? He said, it was revealed in this way. The Quran has been revealed in seven different ways. So recite it in the way that is easier for, for you. <laughs> and here you notice that the re, if the Muslim, they heard this before, they will not fight, correct? Mm -hmm. The guy, he thought this guy is fabricating Quran. That's why he grabbed him from his garment and brought him to Muhammad. But it turned to be, obviously, Muhammad never mentioned that to them. Never, never mentioned it. And remember, this is a small, tiny community, and the believers is like 50, 60. So how come Muhammad forgot to tell them such an important thing that Allah gave him the Quran in seven different ways? Now, because Muhammad trying to cover his stupid mistakes, why he is saying the same chapter, in totally different. Ah, well, Allah gave it to me in seven ways. So all of these stories prove to us that Muhammad is a fraud. Did God give Moses the Torah in seven ways? The, the Muslim, they say, Moses is a Muslim. Okay. Do Allah give Moses the Torah in seven different ways? The, the Muslim, they say, Isa is a Muslim. Wonderful. Did Allah give Isa the Injil in seven different ways? <laughs> right? Yeah, it's just a stupid religion. Anything else? Yeah, uh, I heard also that there are some people are saying that Islam will take over the, the world. Is that true? Well, I don't know. If you go in my page in YouTube, there's a hadith of Muhammad and Sahih Muslim and even Al Bukhari. He said that Islam will go back like a snake going back to its hole. So even Muhammad, yeah, he hope... even Muhammad, he predicted that Islam is dying. Same time, we have the Muslim sheikhs themselves, like Mufti Mink, saying it clearly that Islam is dying. And as you see, if you check around, which Muslim reading, which Muslim country are following Islam? Remember, in Islam, music is haram. TV is haram. Art is haram. Everything the Muslim they do today is, is the way to go to hell. So who is a Muslim in Islam? No, but Islam is not just a religion. Islam is a political government. So if there is no Islamic Sharia law government, there is no religion. It's not like Christianity. Christianity is faith, have nothing to do with the king. The king is a Christian or not, Christianity is exist. Islam, no. If there is no king, is a Muslim, no caliphate, there is no Islam. The Muslim, they divide, they divide the world to three parts. The land of peace, that is Islam, because Muslim will not kill Muslim, supposedly, which is not even, even that they don't do. They kill each other. Like if you check now, every war in the world almost, it's involved Muslims. And then, the, so the world of peace, which is under the control of Muslims, which practice Islamic law. If they don't practice Islamic law, this is not the land of peace. That will make it the land of fitna, which means the land of a trouble. And then the land which is not controlled by Muslims, that is the law, the land of the kuffar, which means the land of war. So land of peace, land of fitna, land of trouble, and land, land of war. If we check right now, which one is the land of fitna, we will find all Muslim countries are not practicing Islam. Even Taliban, they don't. So that means all Muslim countries are land of fitnas, which means shaitan is taking over. And the rest are the land of the kuffar, land of war, which means whatever is left is, is, not, is against Islam. So what is left? So if I ask Muslim now, which Islamic country is not the land of fitna? None. Dubai? Saudi Arabia? Nobody follows Islam no more. Uh, there are, uh, there are even uh, scholars uh, don't agree with each other. I mean, what, 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 what is scholars? What scholars? 
said uh, there are many scholars, uh, I mean, there are scholars also who don't agree with each other when it's complicated. Yeah, that's, uh, that's very normal. Because if Muhammad himself don't agree with Muhammad, Muhammad himself don't agree with Muhammad. As you see, Muhammad, he recited a verse one day, he said the opposite second day. <laughs> but if you go, if if scholars, they do that, this is nothing. But the, the, the Edith Muhammad himself, he don't agree with Muhammad. As an example, uh, if you go in the Quran, hmm? chapter 2, verse 106, Muhammad, he says something after noon. He changed his mind in the morning. And we are not talking about saying something like eat falafel. We are talking about Quran. If you go and read the interpretation, this is chapter 2, verse 106. You will see the drama. Muhammad don't agree. Allah don't agree with Allah. So Allah, he make a verse, let us say, uh, 4 p.m. today. He wake up in the morning, he make a new verse, canceling the verse he made yesterday. So read what it says. This is Tafsir ibn Abbas. So the people of Quraysh, they said, huh, look at Muhammad. He command something and he forbid it. If we change the, the, the interpretation to something newer, let us say, hold on. Let us go on because they have limited English uh, interpretation. This is Ajala Lane. It says the disbeliever began to dread the matter of abrogation, saying, One day Muhammad he enjoins his companion one thing, and then the next day he forbid it. <laughs> So if the scholars disagree, I mean, this guy is mentally ill. You just made a law yesterday. Yesterday, not yesterday, not last year. Not last. You see, we are talking about a guy. He gave them a, a command from God, a law from God. He go to sleep. He piss. He sleep as usual. He wake up. He have a new law. Canceling the law was yesterday. I mean, what happened overnight? <laughs> So when you say the the this the, the scholars don't agree with each other, I mean, well, this is not a big deal. I mean, Muhammad himself, Allah himself, he disagree with Allah. He make a law today because this is a, a clear sign that Allah is confused. This is God supposedly, but obviously it's Muhammad. He fabricate things, so he claim Allah gave him verse. He say it. Second day, people start complain about what he said. It's stupid. It's blah blah so blah 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 blah. So now uh, his religion is flexible, you know. So he changed it. He cancelled what he said yesterday. He make a new verse. There's no way this is from God. This is an idiot, you know, a scam. We have yeah. a guy. We have a guy in the chat. His name is Uthman ibn Farouk. My friend, as name as long as long your name is Uthman, and you are the son of Farouk. I invite you, you and Farouk, to join us. Do you dare, Farouk boy? Why well, you don't come and scare us? He is not Muslim. Oh, I, I, okay. Friendly fire. He's a Muslim or not? So why he call himself? He's not a Muslim. Ah, he's a troll. A troll is a Muslim. Every Muslim is a troll, and every troll is a Muslim. Prove me wrong. Go ahead, Sarah, or sorry, Alisa. Hey, what I can understand it is because. Uh, Quran, Quran, don't say, can you speak louder? Can you speak louder, please? I'm I'm a very old man. I can't hear you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, do you know Do you know how Do you know how old I am? My mom is no. seventeen. My mom is seventeen, and uh, uh, what happened to me now is like what happened to Joe Biden. What is? My mom is seventeen, and I'm Joe Biden, and you know the thing. All right. What do you want to say? Uh, yeah, I wanted to say, uh, example, the Quran. I cannot hear you. Speak louder, please. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, sir, do you hear me now? Okay, I hear you now. Yeah. I said the Quran, example, don't say, I don't know why, I mean, 
Well, you know, uh, yeah, this is not an issue because as any belief in the world, there is people who they are not educated and there is people who are supposed to claim to be educated or they are truly educated. So the one who is educated, let's say he's a professional, he make books in order to explain to the one who is not educated. This is not an issue. The issue is that why the Muslims don't agree with anything about their religion. As an example, all those who make videos in YouTube, like uh, Mimi Hijab. Mimi Hijab, he have a channel just to curse Muslims who they are making da'wah in England. Just to insult them, they are stupid, they are donkeys, they are etc. And the Muslim, they are doing the same to him. But all of them, they are Muslim Sunni. So what is the problem? The problem is that because the Quran is so stupid, that stupidity will have a huge impact on the followers. To the point, they agree about nothing. Like when Mimi Hijab, he invited this guy, uh, uh, Yasser Qadi. And he asked him about if the Quran, you know, if the Quran is preserved. Why for him the Quran is preserved, but for his sheikh the Quran is not? How come they cannot come in agreement about something should be already approved, yes or no, after all those centuries? So the Muslims, this is one of the unique things about Islam. It's religion based on killing each other, not about being united. As soon as Muhammad he died, the Muslim they start slaughtering each other to the point they slaughter even his family. Every single member of his family was killed by Muslims. The Caliphate Uthman they took the, the the hair of his beard one by one. This is the Caliphate, the one who collected the Quran. All the Caliphate been slaughtered, kidnapped, tortured, etc. Who is the one who did that? The Muslims. Aisha herself, she took an army of 10,000 men to kill Ali. So this is telling you that the disagreement have nothing to do with just Muslim today. This is Islam from the beginning. The, the gang leader died and then the fight over the, the cake is started. Islam is not a religion. Islam is a gang and it's a, it's a competition. So now when this guy uh, Mimi Hijab uh, insult the other Muslims who they are doing da'wah, he is not really insulting them only because he don't agree with them, but he feel he is being threatened as a competition. They are fighting over donation. Who want to give donation to who? Who can convince the crowd that he is the one who is telling the truth so more people will join me? So they insult each other nonstop. I mean, this guy, he have thousands of videos just to make fun of Muslims. None of them is about Christianity. I, I forgot the name of the channel. We can play it so people can laugh. So... Uh, what I was trying to say, Quran says that it is uh, complete, that Quran is complete and fully detailed. So, complete? So that's what I don't understand why they read the Tafsir to understand the Quran. Well, no, uh, no, 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 you see the, the Quran, the Quran is just, a, as I said, the Quran is just a, a book of contradiction. As an example, the Quran says it clearly that this is a book we ex explain uh, explain it very well. So based on the Quran, there is no need for interpretation because Allah himself, he explained the Quran. So why we need to explain the Quran when the Quran says, we explain the Quran. You see the, the see my screen? Yes. Okay. Chapter 6, verse number 50. As an example, this is not the only one, there's many of them. And this is how we explain our, uh, our ayat. Okay, so now the Quran is explained. So why we need to explain the explanation? 
because obviously the Quran failed to explain anything. And that is additional proof that the Quran is not a book of God because if I am God and I say I explain it and yet and Muhammad remember he received the Quran in seven ways so it can be easy right <laughs> so after seven ways still the Muslims need more explanation so which means the Quran is explained in seven time still the Muslims disagree about the explanation of the Quran made by Allah so how they will uh, 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 agree with the explanation done by their scars yes. all right you are an ex-muslim now uh, uh lisa um that um we will we will tell you in private all right no problem okay no problem all right anything else yes i wanted to ask about the um, have you heard about them? Yeah. About what? A man. Have you heard about in the hadith a man killed ninety nine people and Allah forgave him at the end? Uh, the guy who killed ninety nine people. Okay. Have you heard that? Yeah, sure. What about it? What? I was wondering, like, uh, uh, because in the Quran, uh, Allah says injustice. Uh, but at the same time, it says that he, uh, this person, I mean, he is all forgiving. For this person who killed 99 people, who, got for, who, who Allah forgave, so I'm wondering what about the people who yeah. got killed, how will they get justice? Well, this is a very stupid story, and I will tell you the reason for that. Because if I say to a person, uh, Okay, you know what? There's a person, he killed one, Allah forgive him. He killed five, Allah forgive him. He killed 10, he killed 20, he killed 50, he killed 60, he killed 70. He killed 99. What I am saying to people, that you can go and kill as many as you wish, and when one day you decide, you can repent and your sin is forgiven. So I'm encouraging killing, right? So... Here the story, and this is a story you are talking about, this is, can be found in all those hadith we see on the screen, is, is just a stupid story. I am not against believing that God have a mercy, He forgive us, and otherwise we don't deserve to go to heaven anyway, because we have, uh, you know, we have a lot of sin. But here the story is different, because I am telling people that don't worry if you kill one, two, three, four, Five, ten, fifty, ninety, ninety-nine, a hundred. In fact, there's no limit. Still Allah, He will forgive you. So now, what is the purpose then of anything called morality in Islam if all what you need to do is to repent? And I'm saying to you, no limit of how many people you can kill. right yeah so you see the, the the logic of mercy that you are merciful too that's why when when the Lord they ask him how to pray they said you pray like this our father out of heaven and then it says forgive to us as we forgive to others you know so uh, because we transpass against others people transpass against us we forgive to others, forgive to us as we forgive to them. So now, uh, the forgiveness in Christianity, it should be first a forgiveness of the person, the victim, before forgiveness of God. And before you ask for forgiveness, even if you are a victim, you should ask God, before you ask God to forgive, to be forgiven, you forgive those who hurt you. God will do justice anyway, with you or with them. Justice will be done. And the mercy of God will not involve ruin justice. Here, the guy he go kill, we are creating a society of monsters. The guy, now any guy who is a criminal, he say, you see what? I have long way to go. I did not even kill 10. Let me continue. I will repent before I die. The second I feel I'm dying, 
I will put my finger up to Allah and say Shahada. So what we are doing, we are encouraging Kareem and 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 uh, uh, and uh, you know uh, disaster in this earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then actually, and then the guy he 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 went to heaven, you know. <laughs> so a crazy, stupid religion. Uh, but Muhammad here is trying to be wise, supposedly, and supposedly the purpose of it is encouraging people to ask for repentance. But he ruined the story. Like if he say he commits sin, but now he is making it about killing, you know, destroying the yeah. life. So this guy he destroyed the life of a hundred family. You know, there's maybe thousand orphan behind. Yet he is going to go to heaven. Why? He repent. You know. Uh, however, Muhammad he have bigger stupid stories than this. At least here he repent, right? Uh, but. Uh, uh, if you uh, if you go to the hadith where it's speaking let us see um, <clears throat> what do you mean? I'm, I'm trying to remember the whole words of the hadith so I can find it so like the guy uh uh, you say uh, Bismillahi wa bihamdi 100 times. Okay. Bismillahi wa bihamdi 100 times. Then, even if you have the sin more than the foam of the ocean, your sin will be forgiven. So, what kind of religion this religion is? Even if I have sin more than the foam of the ocean, My sin is forgiven. Just say, just say Bismillah we one at a time. That's it. I do not even repent. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I did not even repent. I just said Bismillah we one at a time, and my sin is going to be wiped out, even if it's more than the foam of the of the ocean. How that is godly. Yeah, one hundred time a day uh, uh, will have his sin forgiven, even if it is like the foam of the sea. See it? Mm -hmm. So why anyone want to be good anyway? I go for no kid, kill, steal, rape, uh, you know, scam, do whatever you want. Just say Bismillah, I will be handy one at a time <laughs> before I go to sleep. And second day, I start my crimes ring again. He's not, he's not encouraging people to be decent. He is satanic, encouraging people to be filthy. For the, the fruit. Yeah, go ahead. It's, like whatever. it's a very strange thing that I can do whatever I want. And the evil thing, then after that, if I say, God forgive me, and Allah forgive me, then he will forgive. I think this is... I mean, there are many people, example, men who go, example, rape women, where they have children and all that. Then after that, they say, oh, Allah, I mean, God forgive me, then God forgive. This is like, for me, something very strange. You see, the idea of forgiveness is to give a chance for people. Uh, so the earth will not be a chaos, you know, because uh, if we know that we will not be forgiven, we will do more sin. So hope, yeah, yeah, hope is hope is a good thing, but here the guy is not even uh, repenting. He just say one hundred percent, one hundred time, uh, 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 in the name of Allah. Uh, he did not for he did not uh, uh, repent. He's doing it. He would do it more. So what the purpose of Islam then? Is just to say to teach me to say one hundred time the name of Allah, and that's it. Everything is do good to go. <laughs> So imagine I say the name of Jesus 100 times, and then I'm, okay, I'm going to go to heaven. And the funny is the Muslim, they lie, and they say it's the Christian, they believe that Jesus died for their sin, they can go fornicate, they can go kill, they can go rape, they can do, this is absolutely false. Jesus make it so clear, not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who does his will, it is them. By saying Shahada, according to even to Muhammad, if you say Shahada alone, 
is enough to go to heaven. There's a video of Zachar Naik speak about uh, the 100 bill. I don't know if you watch it. So he said that there is a, a like when you say Shahada, you have 100 bill, like dollar. And there is other things like Salah, five dollars, uh, uh, Zakat, five dollars. So he says, by just saying Shahada, you are saved. That's it. You know, the rest is a small. It's not about how many uh, 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 bills you have. It's about the value. So saying Shahada, that there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his false prophet, that alone is 100 bill. The rest is going to be make like 60. So he made them like 160. I have the video. I can play it. Very stupid guy. Very silly guy. Let me see. I have mm -hmm. the video. Yeah. I will play it after you, after you finish, so people can laugh. Anything else? <clears throat> that... Thank you so much. Else. You're welcome. Thank God you. bless you, sister. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, sister. You're welcome. So this is like I explained to you how Muslim go to heaven. Saying, lying, saying that we Christians, we go to heaven because we believe just in Jesus uh, die for us and we can do sin as much as we want. That's what he's saying. Why non-Muslims who do righteous deeds will be put into hellfire? And Muslims who are unrighteous, why should they be put in heaven? We have to understand that what is the meaning of the word righteousness? And what is the meaning of the word that who is a righteous person? For me, to make you understand, I'll give you a few examples. Number one, if there are total 199 US dollars, Divided into 64 notes. The 64 notes, if you total all the value of these 64 notes, it is $199. And I distribute the notes to few people. Some get 10 notes, some get 20 notes, some get 30 notes, some get less, some get more. A normal person who may not be aware of the notes and the value will say whoever gets the most notes, number of notes, is the richest person. No, it's not like that. You have to see what is the value of each note. In these 64 notes, one note is of $100. Mm -hmm. One note is of $20. The $100 notes is for a person who believes that there is only one God and that God has got no partners and see? Prophet Muhammad is the messenger. That's it. Of that almighty. The number $20 bill, US dollar, is a person who prays five times a day. Then there's one $10 note, there is two $5 note. $10 note is for a person who gives zakat, who gives charity. $5 note is a person who fasts, and $5 note is a person who goes for hajj. The remaining, all if you put together, is $140. The remaining $59 are one $1 bill. All put together are the 65 notes. So 59 notes are of one $1. So just because somebody has 30 notes or 30 bills, doesn't make him rich. If he has 30 bills of one $1, he, he has only a value of $30. The person who has $100 is more richer than all the other notes put together. If all the other 63 notes put together, will make it only $99, but one bill of $100 is more valuable than 63 bills all put together are $99. That's the reason the person who is the creator, he has put this formula. And he clearly mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 40. So if you say Shahada, you have 100 bill, $100 bill, that's it, you are going to heaven. You pass the 50 percent. Did you hear it? It is them who believe that you do not need to follow God. You just say Shahada. You say Shahada, this is $100 bill. Prior, who cares? $20, nothing, not a big deal.
twenty dollars. Will not make a big difference. Being charity, five dollars. You say the shahada only. It's one hundred. You pass. You see the evil religion. They claim about good deed, and he is explaining now the righteousness. So righteousness in Islam is not to be a righteous. Is about saying Muhammad is a prophet. He said that to you. It's in front of you. Who is a righteous? Is the one who say the shahada. Is not the one who do righteousness. And Surah Nisa chapter number 4, 716, that Allah will forgive any shirk, Allah will forgive any sin if he pleases, but he will never forgive the sin of shirk. For anyone who has committed shirk has strayed far away, has done the most heinous sin. That means the biggest sin in Islam according to our Creator, Almighty God Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing shirk, is associating partners with him. It's the biggest sin. And the best thing a person can do is talking. Belief in only one God and belief that there is no one worthy of worship but Almighty God and Prophet Muhammad is the messenger for Almighty You have to put Muhammad so in the middle. He's the creator. He said the rule. You see, this is how why they are pagan. You, it's not like saying you have to believe in Allah. No, no, no. You have to believe in Allah and Muhammad. If you don't do that, you're, you're not saved. So Muhammad is more important than Allah. You see the liar, they say, they believe in Tawheed. So why you are associating the religion and the belief and the faith and the salvation with Muhammad shouldn't be the purpose of Muhammad that people worship Allah and that's it obviously it's not you have to say the name of Muhammad with the name of Allah and that will give you the 100 bill we are the people who are undergoing an examination let me give one more example that in certain test there are certain compulsory questions which you should pass separately. Like I did a medical examination in MBBS. Besides the theory paper, we had viva vos, orals. Every student had to pass separately viva vos, separately. Well, sometimes I don't know what he's saying. Brother and sister, but the whole Christian prince are lying to you. We Muslims, we don't believe in dollar. And then you take the example of dollar because I don't like dollar. And now we were brother. I just told you that if you say Tahada is equal to one dollar. Don't forget to send that one dollar the missing. What? If you send that one hundred dollars the missing, Allah will forgive your sin. One hundred dollars? I mean even this even the example about your God involved with dollars. Any Abdul? <clears throat> we are we don't have Abdul today, not even one. We have only ex Muslims. Do we have more ex-Muslims? No more ex-Muslims? Well, according to Islam, I was born as a Muslim. And there is some truth in that. My mom, she told me I used to do poo-poo when I was a kid. Hey, in the pant, I can't believe it. Obviously, I was a very much Muslim. Extremely, extremist Muslim. <laughs> I mean, who is the one who's going to make poop in his pants unless he's a Muslim? Who can defeat that? Hmm? Everyone is born as a Muslim, huh? True story. Hmm. Mehdi, Mehdi, any Muhammadan? Any Muhammadan have a hundred dollar bill he is saved by Allah just for saying shahada hundred dollar bill that's it you say shahada you are saved brother true story so why you need to do hajj and why you need to give donation to Zakir Naik and why you have to pray five times you just say shahada in fact just to show you how stupid Islam is According to Muhammad, there is one night in Islam. If you pray, is better than a thousand months. 
It's better what? Better than a thousand months of a prayer. A thousand months is what? 73 years. Correct? So imagine Muhammad is just fabricating, trying to make a point, which is very silly in Arabic. So he have to add R, R, R at the end. And now because of that, he made a poo-poo. He just said that one night you pray is better than a thousand night of a prayer. Actually, it's 83 years, sorry. 83 years and four months. Do you see it? So you pray one night. Okay, who is going to, why you want to pray? I mean, all your, how long will you live? Many people don't reach that age. Maybe there's some people, they live maybe a hundred. But if one night you pray it, it's better than 83 and four months of a praying five times a day. So if I pray, Two years, which means this night this year and the same night next year. I made I, I passed hundreds of years of a prayer. Why you need to pray five times? Do you see the stupidity? However, uh, just to let you know. Muhammad, he forgot when is the night of Al-Qadr is. The Muslim, they translate it as the night of power. Sound like six. Hey, Muslims, how come Muhammad, he forgot which night it is? How you know, how now you will know which night it is? Huh? You forgot. There's a story, Muhammad, he woke up, he was asleep. He woke up and he came out of his house and he started running. Oh, oh you okay? All right. Oh. What happened? He remembered when the night of Qadr is. Allah just showed it to him. Wonderful. He starts running to the Muslims to tell them the time of night al Qadr. And when he arrived, he said, Prophet, why are you are running? What's happened? Oh, oh, okay, I saw a dream. And you know, I will tell you when the night of al Qadr, I just remembered. He said, Okay, Prophet, tell us. I said, Okay, I forgot. What? Abdul, so all this drama is to tell them that you forgot again? I thought we have only one Joe Biden. Muslims, is that a true story? Allah, he just told him when the, he reminded him where the night is. And now Muhammad, he ran to tell you, and he forgot again. All oh, those reference, look at this madness. According to the story, there's two men, they were fighting and that made Muhammad forget when. I mean, how in the world that is make sense? If Muhammad remember, it was, let us say, the seventh night of the month. I remember that. I go outside, I saw two men fighting, and now I forgot again? Any Abdul? Betito. The prophet of Betito. Joe bite me. He forgot. 
if Joe bite me is in the White House. So who is in the trash can? That is the question. Any Abdul? All right, guys, I'm not going to keep it longer. We are happy we have some ex-Muslims that join us today. I hope they learn good. And always be careful. Muslims, they try to fool you. I don't blame nobody if somebody fool you. Remember, if a foolish like Muhammad, as you see, the guy don't even remember his name. If a fool like Muhammad can fool you, well, how stupid are you? You have to be literally decide to be stupid, literally, to believe in such an idiot. Right? Last call before we go. Any Muslim? My voice is tired, Muslims. So now you can take advantage of me. I cannot even scream. Any Muslim? Last call. Mayday, mayday. Any Abdul want to take advantage of me? I'm weak now. I do not have my lunch yet. Anyone? Take it or leave it. No? Petitos. I mean, how I can tempt you to come and fight with me? There's a hand up. I don't see any hand. What hand? Where's the hand up? Where is the hands up? Why you guys, you see what I don't see? Are you Allah? That's weird. Something fishy, guys, about you. Do you have a, Do you have the eyes of Jibreel? So I see not what you see? Do you remember what Allah he says to the angels? I know not what you know. He was calling me a liar. Who? Put, put your hand up. Who, who's, who's he? His name is Jack. Because you say to me, he has hand up. I don't see anyone hand up. There is a place you see the hands. Where do you see the hands? Is it like in the side you see? I don't see anything. Put your hand in the chat. I will help again. I will invite you. I don't even see their names, so I can invite them from my side. Are they texting? I don't see their text. Usually when you call their names, they act like dead. You know, they stop moving. Like after I leave, all of them, they are heroes. Christian Prince, like there's a guy, his name is Sincere Muslim. He come and he make comment. I offer Christian Prince many times a debate, but the coward, he keep running away from me. Every video I make, he posts there. I offer the coward Christian prince, but he never agreed to debate with me. <laughs> what we can say, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, Muslims have no balls. That's why I decided to donate some of my balls to Allah. I'm not using them anyway. You know, too much balls will kill you. In the Middle East, balls are called bozaline. Everything is upside down there. If you are a Muslim and you are out of balls, I can give you one. Okay, two. I mean, three, you cannot handle it. They are heavier than you. Trust me. Any Mohammedan? Last call. Huh? You don't want to play with me basketballs? Even that is not there. Well, they have no balls and they cannot play basketballs. And Allah knows best. <laughs> Alright, guys. God bless. God is good. So is Jesus. And always we are victorious. Happy to hear more Muslims leaving Islam. We spoke to many of them today. It was a blessing to spend some time with you. It is a blessing to share the truth. And the truth will set you free. And remember always. Blame nobody. 
for doing a foolish act you did. Blame yourself for believing in foolishness. And the wise Lord is the only one who can provide you with wisdom. Stay with him or you are lost. So we pray that the Lord, he will give you the wisdom. He will make you speak wise with your family, with your children, so they will love you. Because people who speak foolishness, they bring anger and bad anger, not the good ones, especially in their families. So be wise, be smart. Wisdom is love. Wisdom is about giving. Wisdom is about protecting. Wisdom is about being you as a parent or a son or a daughter, being loyal, being faithful. The wise person don't betray. The wise person don't betray the ones he love. The second you betray the one you love, you lost them forever. So be wise. And the most important wisdom is to be loyal to our Lord. You betray him, you deny him, he will deny you. God is good. So is Jesus. I mean to that. And see you soon.